Ha. Yo. Cryptonline.com. Ew. Ew. It's the Hip Hop Heads podcast. You got me, Vega the Chosen. Vega. Bonafide to my right. I'm over here. He's over here now. To my left, we got the supervisor in the Brrr. building. What up? And we got special guest today, Chairman Chow. What up? What's the deal? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Happy holiday to everybody out there. You know what I mean? Welcome. And, Bon uh, Pasqua. Yeah. The Seder. It's it's uh, Easter. Happy Easter, man. Hell Something yeah. Like that. Hell yeah. He is risen. That's what they tell me. Yeah. Apparently, everyone's talking about it. <laughs> everyone's talking about it. For mad years. For mad years. <laughs> Been talking about it. This is old news. You just heard? <laughs> Yo, I'm glad to I'm glad to have a special guest in here for a change. Yeah, man. Um, but apparently it's not just because it's the Easter spirit. Y'all got an album coming out, right? This is true. I want to hear all about this. All right. I want to hear all about this, and uh, I want to hear about how it all came together. And yeah, we'll uh, get oh, into it. Peace to Billy Slang on that beat. Yeah. yeah. Ding, ding. Bill Slang. Me and Kung Fu still got to come through and. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got the rap battle. Yeah, 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 I totally forgot about it till just now. I, I, yeah, I keep, Every week. I keep forgetting about it. I totally forgot about it. We'll come back to it. I'm going to have to show up early and just write. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I got the second verse. All right, cool. I'll go right. first. I'll go first. I set it off. Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Damn, it's the Lord's Day. Vega, so they thank say. you for coming through again. Yeah. And uh, blessing us with another meal. Yeah. Got the Easter dinner up in here. This guy comes super through like official, the, like, super official, like the Kris Kringle of honey hams over here. You never know what Vega might come through with. He's a <laughs> real culinary individual. You should have seen what I cooked last week. I thought we were gonna have a show. I wasn't sure. Yeah, but I cooked this fucking chicken and rice, dude. It was crazy. I was like, oh man, these guys. What do you mean chicken out. and rice? That just sounds basic. It sounds very basic, but believe me, it's not basic. I mean, I believe you. By the way, you just <laughs> looked you, at yeah, me. You elaborate. Just gave me the eye. Elaborate on the chicken. <laughs> you got the well, you got the chicken. I got you know yeah. You put the spices on it. Delicious, right? Okay. Cook that shit up. How you cooking it in the oven? Uh, I cook it in the oven, but I cook it in the pan too. So it's a double whammy because I uh-huh. use so much chicken. You know, you're, what not, I mean? you're not doing to... it like the Paula Patton fried chicken, are you? No, no, no. I didn't fry the chicken. No. Ooh, I didn't fry the chicken. She was putting the seasoning in after she put it in the oil. It was it was a whole mess. No, that's uh, no bueno. Oh man, it was all bad. Man, we got to get Uncle Roger on her. <laughs> she right didn't away. know. She did not know. <laughs> she didn't know. But then I put you know in the rice. You got a little saison in there. You got paprika. You got okay. the, all the veggies. You know, like ah, the fucking okay. you know. You got the onion. The fucking multiple peppers in there. Jalapenos. Sick, yeah. Lots of shit, man. Just. So okay. good. I'll make some for y'all again. Let me get the towel. Hang on. Hang on. My mouth is water, and I apologize. It's all good. It's all good. Um, y'all see that dude who died and showed up to his funeral? It was like a fucking rap show. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, they had this funeral at the club. <laughs> yeah. You see this? <laughs> they had him. They had him propped nah. up. They had Child, him propped him up this? like Weekend at Bernie's, bro. Okay. Yo, exactly like Weekend. Bur- it was like Weekend at Bernie's in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> so did he have it planned? Yeah, like he, he, he was like was when I die, die, maybe he was like you know prop me up. These were his wishes, I think so. They're like bring me to the club. Yeah. yeah, they had his corpse standing up there, man. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Conductor Williams had a tweet one day that was like, "Yo, I go to funerals and like I want to pay respects to people and stuff like that." And and I totally understand if that's what you wanted to be played at your music, but when you come to my funeral, I want my music blasting. Yeah, and I thought that was so fly and like such a good way to send somebody out who's uh-huh. devoted their entire life to music. I was like, not to steal that, you know, and you know, bite or nothing like that. But I was, I'm thinking the same thing when I die. Like yeah, I got, that's I got, how you want I have, it. That's how you want it. I have no problem with that. Yeah, I personally I got, I got to play your music. Go. But the no. only the only thing that's tough is I got like already so much music out there. Like two and a half years in, three years in, that mm-hmm. like. Let's say I die in like 30 years from now. Like, yo, that's going to be whoever has to decide to, you know, take two hours or three hours out of the music. That's, you know, hopefully you, they don't find too much pressure in it. That's going to be so much better for your funeral. Yeah, exactly. Because no, but, y- y- your funeral is going to be a slapper. Yeah. Yeah. It's like people are going to be outside dying to get it. Oh, no pun intended. <laughs> but, you know, dying that's to get fine. in it because it's going to be like, oh, man, I yo. can't wait to hear what, what they're playing on the on the third leg of that funeral. That's yeah, going right. to be phenomenal. Might be some unreleased joints. And I told, yeah, I told, yeah. I told, I told the homies, y'all better be performing and shit. 
Right. <laughs> but that's different than your dead body actually being like at the club. Now, oh, no, no, yeah, totally, totally, totally different. Then I wasn't like, even trying to justify that or like I was just like, yo, I mean, that's the only thing I could think even close to that. But yo, they had my man like straight up like on stage, just propped up. There was a video like I the seen arms many folded. years ago <laughs> where like the dude like literally was lifted out of the casket and then like, yeah, 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 I remember man, that one? And, yeah, like yeah. scared the fuck out of his mom. That shit was weird too. That shit was wild, weird. Where was that? I think it was Baltimore, maybe or something like Do you that. See? Yeah, yeah, you like see? they started playing music and like he started dancing to the music. <laughs> like, yo, shout out to whoever was sick enough to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna be the dude who's doing the or- uh Who's the puppeteer? There? The puppeteer. Yeah, yeah, I was to say the orchestration, but the puppeteer. <laughs> oh man, people are wilding. Yo, 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 kung fu! I'll be the puppeteer at your funeral, bro. Yeah. Dude, I don't know why like, you yeah, think I'll be dead be before you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you don't know the martial arts I do. I have discipline. Look at you, bulk high. <laughs> yo, there's a lot of preservatives in this. But for system real, right there. if we do go all weekend at Bernie's, like, I just want to make sure I do you guys proper. Yeah. Not saying that I will live, I'll probably live longer than all of you. No, you can use me to get in the fast lane after I die, all right? You just prop me up in that passenger seat. We're good to go. Yo, you my, can hit the my fast organs lane all are day. pickled. You get to no use way. the uh, high occupancy vehicle lane. Yeah, that's like <laughs> <laughs> use body in your car. <laughs> Got a stiff in the back seat. It's all good. <laughs> that was wow. a tough one. That's tough. Uh, I don't know what the, what, what else you got, Jelani? We had a lot of shit happen. It's been a while, man. It has been, huh? It's been a couple weeks. It's been a minute, dude. Um, the honestly, like we haven't been around. Like the Grammys happened. No, we were here, we were here. Nah, for we that, was, right? we, uh, really? I think we did one show since then, right? Did we? I'm I think, pretty I, sure I we think, did one show. Since I think then. we were here the when the, it was live, then, right? Because it was BTS. Two or three. The weeks Nas ago? had come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think I think you're right. Was, you're right. There was a Loma show. There was a that's yeah, right, we did but the we moment. Didn't, but but I, that was just me interviewing him. We oh, didn't yeah. get together and actually do it. Like it's a little, great interview, it's like by a bo- the way. Bonus episode. Thank you. Great yeah, it was really good. I'm glad we did that, man. He's a he's a good dude, and he's he's pretty prolific. He's doing some cool stuff right we now. We need to do that more often. Yeah, we'll keep it moving with that for sure. Hopefully, yeah, shout uh, out to Loman, man. Hopefully, this fellow chairman Chow will tell us more about what he's working on. Oh yeah, definitely. But real quick, I got to plug Loman because yo, that's absolutely my brother in this. Like. Very few people, I'd say, in music, I could say, you know, for real, brother. Like, this dude was at my wedding. He was there for many pivotal moments in my career as far as Chairman Chow goes. Every single moment. Um, He's been there since the beginning. But he was a big fan of Overdrive Radio. And he was like, it's it's funny how it happened, but he was like, kind of like, I don't mean to say this in any negative way. The way he says it is he was bugging me. But he was just persistent, like, yo, I'm going to be on there every week. And immediately I was like, yes, because I was a fan of his beats from the um, Shut Up and Rap album. And we had uh, been booked by the same dude, Marco Local Films, and he had us at the Davis Square Theater. And Loman was one of the uh, acts on there, and I was the host. Mm-hmm. This is when I was, like, you know, post-rapping and it was – doing radio and uh, Marco Loco was like, bro, you need to host the show, blah, blah, blah. That was like the first official show I was billed to, um, I was on the like, you know, actual flyer for it, but I ended up hosting a rec show like right before that, uh, like impromptu, like the host wasn't there, didn't show up, didn't tell anybody that he wasn't coming. They just looked at me like, this motherfucker right here is going to host this show. And I was like, yeah. You know what I mean? I You're just, ready, right? Right place, right time. Exactly. And I was already booked for the next show, and I was like, this would be good practice. This this was at church, if you guys are familiar. Oh, hell yeah. yeah we know the church. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know mm-hmm. you guys. I mean, the listen. I know you guys are yeah. veterans <laughs> over there. But the listeners, um, Church Boston, a lot of people got their start out there. And when I say start, like, my first, like, bigger show, even though it wasn't a big show, was yeah. at church. You know what I mean? That's that's to me. Like, my first show was at the Dublin House in Dorchester. I'm very true to my Dorchester roots, and I call myself a Dorchesterian. But, uh, yeah, man. Oh, no. I, I just want to say big shout-out to Loman. I had to take a second for that because, you know, that's somebody who I would not be here without Loman. Um, you know what I mean? I'd probably be doing, like, some type of 
you know, I'd own my own business or whatever, but yeah, I would, yeah. it wouldn't be child film. A different lanes, different lanes. Yeah. I don't mean to make cut you off, but can you give us like a, a rundown? Like, how did you get started? Like, how long you been doing this? Give us like the whole rundown. Um, you, like, let everybody know. Like, how did you get in the game? How long you been doing it? Like, I want to hear the whole story. For uh, those who are unfamiliar, please, yeah, not nah, for sure. So I used to go by CL Nine. This is like crazy old, and if you look up my music, I, I used to be ashamed of it before because like I hate the way I delivered shit and. I just don't like I don't I don't like the music. I'm not a fan of it. But um Yo, I'm about to be forty years old. If I look back at twenty year old, you know how old it is. me, I'm like, oh, I hate that guy. Yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> you know how it is. But um now I was I was doing my thing for a long time since like for for me a long time, relatively long. I'm twenty nine years old. Mm -hmm. Um since I was eighteen. I, I started rapping when I was like sixteen in high school type shit. Mm -hmm. But um my man Sean Steves actually put me in front of a microphone for the first time when his homie had a a quote unquote studio, you know, microphone in the bedroom type shit. But, um, and that was, yeah, that was 2011. And from there, um, I made like a little mixtape. My boy was like, no, I, I, I go, I'm going to get you on the radio. And this was on regular radio, which online radio station and stuff like that. But they were pretty fucking big for that, um, that yeah, they, time they back were. then. A lot of cats uh, had shows on a there. Lot yeah. of, a lot of dudes. What um, was the name of it? <coughs> Unre unregular? Unregular radio. I remember Unregular Radio. Yeah, okay. yeah so Raw Time They were radio. around when we were doing the podcast, too. Yeah, like, that was were. the thing. They yeah. were still around. And um, so, you know, I had homies who just, like, kept inviting me to go to their show because they, like, they liked how I rapped and I was cool and I, I smoked a bunch of bud. So it, over there was very, very heavy with the bud. And uh, which was cool. And hey, as a them. kid, I was like, you know, 18 years old. I'm like, I'm, I'm in a building where I can smoke with all my friends and freestyle for three hours. This is fucking crazy. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. Don't I, mind if I do. I didn't have any idea about how I wanted to be, you know, is doing that, things as far as the business. It was just completely I wanted to rap. Like, Is that gone now? They used to have like a window you could watch. Oh, like it, that's completely gone um, uh, on New Bedford Street. Yeah. That, that's uh, or, or is it Bedford Street? I'm kind of buzzed right now. I'm getting down with y'all, but um, either way, um, I would say that like that was a very pivotal moment and very formative years for me. That I didn't go to, I went to college for like fucking four classes, and it wasn't for me. I just decided there that I wasn't gonna be doing that. I I feel like I picked the wrong major. You got to live to learn. Yeah, I picked um computer programming, and as soon as I walked in there, <clears throat> I just didn't fit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it, it reminded me of the Dolph Lundgren story, even though I'm not like, I'm like 6'4", but I'm not his size as far as like, you know, muscles and all that stuff. But You mean the Universal Soldier, Dolph Lundgren? Yeah, like he <laughs> said the story and it was mad funny to me because I, I connected with it. Like, he was, in high, uh, he was in college, he was trying to be a scientist and he was just like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't clicking. I was in there and everyone's like, why are you here? And um, yeah. people looked at me like that when I was in there. Um, and I felt like for the first time I was like, damn, I, I really don't belong here. I'm going to just get the fuck out of here. And, like, my parents didn't like that. And I just didn't care to go back. Like, I was making money in other ways. And also, you know, music was so important to me that I was like, nah, fuck that. I didn't think I was going to make it as a rapper. I just wanted more time to fucking rap. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's where I was at. And it could have been anything in music. There's so many different lanes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was, you know, <laughs> constantly going back. Eventually, um, I was like, I'm going to start my own radio station just because... I'm not radio station, my own radio show, because I, I like music so much. And I was that dude who was like, you know, I hate to say it like, like this now, but uh, I was like bootlegging CDs back in high school. Of course, making yeah, money yeah. And shit, You know, selling fucking the documentary two weeks before it yeah, came yeah, out. Yeah. Like, you know, this is past seven years, so I can't Piece be of Ben Knight. <laughs> also, it was so little money that I made. No you know, names. I made, I made a couple of pairs of sneakers off that shit, but that's about it. Um, nah, so that, those were my starts, man. I was really always focused on music and being a fan first and then kind of getting down. But, um, I would say once I started my first radio show on regular, ra on a regular radio called underdog radio, mm -hmm. that, that was like when I started to really make a lot of friends and my network, you know, they say your network is your net worth. Eventually, you know, down the line, if y'all follow my path, I, you know, underdog radio stopped, I went back to... When did that stop? Uh, 2012. So I went for like okay. nine months, right? And yeah. then I started rapping a little bit more. I had met Mags Wood um, on Underdog. He was one of the, the guests. And this okay. he was the only guest I never booked. Besides Evil Doer and Magno Garcia, those were the two guests I never booked. And I'm like mad tight with the three of those dudes. Okay. Now. It's so, super funny how that happened. It's like an organic day. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Me and Magno got some shit dropping soon. Um, that's, a part that's two to the first phenomenal, one. Phenomenal, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just funny shit how that happens. 
But, um, you know, down the line, I kind of was out of things. I was in a relationship that really wasn't for me as well. And yeah. I, but I stayed for like three years. So I get out of this relationship. I start this other radio show, Overdog Radio. Um, damn, I got like chill saying that because that was such like wild times for me. Um, I met so many influential people, dope people, people I looked up to. Where was Overdog out of? Uh, WEMFradio.com. Okay. This was 2014 to 2018 for four and a half years. And oh, she so did that for a minute then. Yeah. I met like pretty much when I say the entire city that I knew in my lane. When mm-hmm. I say my lane, I, I wasn't interviewing like, you know, Cousin Stiz or nothing like that. But I would have. Right. It's it just the opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity, yeah. Yeah. yeah it just also different sounds like sonically. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't necessarily. We played Stiz and shit like that, but the majority of the music would be like... You're looking for more maybe up-and-comers versus like more established guys um, like Stiz, perhaps. Yeah, not necessarily by design. It would just be like kind of what the market was was doing. Like I could interview, insert person. You know, I would like stack the shows to be... It was, it was, it was a two or three hour show and I would be stacking them. I'm talking about like I'd get like three or four artists booked, get really high with them, interview them like 30 minutes a piece, try mm-hmm. and give them as, as, as great as interviews as I could. And that's what I like, honestly, it's really dope for me. Um, seeing people from that era who were like, yo, I never got an interview like that before. And I still haven't like anytime I go to a show or whatever, not any, every single time, but a lot of, uh, people would tell me like, yo, most of the time I go to a show, like, they don't have that attention to detail. They don't ask these Ooh, questions. That okay, you, that you so can that's tell. what I wanted to ask you. What is your technique to get that extra bit of info that maybe other people aren't looking to do? Like, I ask questions I generally want to know, and I save it until I get on the microphone with them. Like you as a fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I play buddy Not buddy just, in the sense of like no weasel shit, but I'll just like I try and do small talk, and then I'm literally trying not to ask you, yo, on track seven yeah, with yeah. this producer. I get those like nerdy questions. No, but and I, I but do like, you ever get that like like instinct that you want to do that though? Like as oh, like a fan again. of an artist, oh, be like, yeah, yo, yeah, absolutely, oh. yeah. When I see people, like when I see my homies, I'd be like, yo, <laughs> Remember without this sample shit snitching, that, yeah. how did you do this to this sample? Like, absolutely, what was that? And yeah, then, like, you know, some people don't like that shit, but I am very much a sponge. I'm always the monkey see monkey do type. Where if I want to do something, I will watch it a few times. And I'll just try and replicate it. I, I have no fear in that sense of, you know, I have some fears, but like I have no fear whatsoever in the sense of being like, I'm going to try that. See, and at the same time, too, it's like that's a teaching and learning moment versus like not you like fishing for a sample. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You just want to know, you know, how did you flip oh, it? Yeah, you know, like what was what was your technique behind it? Like, I got to know how that will, how that works. And only homies. I would never yeah. ask anybody I didn't know. Like, right, right, there, right. There's a, a level of comfort mm-hmm. in, in my homie. I, I. I will ask homies who may not tell me because they'll be like, oh, protective. I won't yeah. name any names, but I got some homies who are very by their book yeah. who love me that will never tell me how they did something. And I respect that. Yeah. But I, that also makes you maybe dig a little more and go, okay, maybe I need to try different techniques and see if I can can flip it a little bit or, yeah. or, 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 or you catch something even, and you go, oh. I didn't even mean it like disrespectfully like that. I meant it like, it's like you being like, oh, that shit was dope. I oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's no, exactly no, what. That's exactly. No, no, that's like, exactly how no, I thought. Like, on the opposite oh, hand, though, I'm the type of dude. I'll show a friend as much as I can. I, I try and show him how to fish because I had a just a couple friends who really took a liking to me in the sense of showing me how to do something. They somebody might be your friend, but they might not necessarily want to show you how what they did because they went to college for four years and they paid a hundred thousand yeah. dollars to learn this. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and yeah. I understand that and I respect that as well. But these are friends who spent 10, 15 years learning a, a bunch of shit who were just there for me, to, and I was able to ask questions. They didn't yeah. give me no crazy lesson plans or nothing like that. But when I was like, yo, this, these are the things that are holding me back. I don't understand this. And th- when I look back at these questions, they were super basic. Like, I didn't even know what a snare or a kick was three years ago. Right. You know, you know stupid shit like that. Even though you were deep into like hip hop at that time, crazy, but, but like, crazy. and you hear these words, like kind of like buzzwords, I guess, for production. But then like you're like, 
you know, what's the difference between these two things? The average person who doesn't know music or how to make music mm -hmm. doesn't know those things. They just kind of go along with yeah. it. You, know? you need not, someone to put you on. Yeah, you it's really do. It's funny, though, because, like, the stuff that I didn't know, people, random people who would be like, you didn't know that? And they laugh at it. And I, I have no shame in that, but... Um, but it, neither did they at some point. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? They, they just had, learned it a different they had way. Yeah, they learned. And um, I, I'd really say that, like, you know, especially, like, Lightfoot, Loman, um, trying to think, like, Michelangelo, uh, that's my dude as well. He showed me a couple things. Vinyl Villain showed me a couple things. And it was those moments that, like, not as much as Loman in, in Lightfoot. They showed me yeah. some key things, though. Um, and n not like I, I learned, like, my whole style from them or nothing. Because you listen to my beats and they don't yeah, sound yeah, like Yeah, yeah, they don't them. sound like them. You know what I mean? I, I knew what I wanted to do since day one. I just didn't know how to do it. Right. And then that that's my... my Pretty much my strength with production is like my homie Teo came through. I do a lot of co-productions with Teo, Loman and stuff like that. And he heard like my whole first album, the, the pilot, and he told me, he's like, yo, bro, this is ill because you knew what you wanted to do already in the sense of like you had an ear for what's dope. So yeah, you might not necessarily know what the sample is going to be and how the song is going to sound, but you know... Yo, you just, this passes a certain filter of you and being like, yo, this is a dope product. You have an ear... Ear for the music, but you just needed to learn a way to put it all together. Exactly. And get it going. Like, it like you, you go, okay, that's a dope sample. How do I chop that up and then and then lay it down and then put drums to it or whatever? You know what I mean? There's yeah. a whole process and a See, recipe to it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I mean, a lot of my, um, yeah, I won't even get into all that. But, uh, <laughs> nah, so I did Overdog Radio for four and a half years, very formative years for me as well. That was kind of like, uh, it, it was the second coming because Overdog, Underdog, like you, you can see the wordplay on it. But um, Question for you about that. Uh, Who was your favorite guest that you had on? Damn. Well, that's uh, a loaded question right there. Very, but, you know, you, sometimes someone comes through and they really catch you off guard. You know what I mean? Yeah. You go, wow, this, this was, wasn't I expected. But that's a long time we, period to choose from. It's a long time from. period. Just, just, one, time just period. one person who pops to mind, though. We had a lot of Maybe Collins. not your favorite, but, I have you know. to name a few. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can do that, too. You because, can do that, too. Like, Shout some out. By all means. I'm not yeah. that dude that's like, oh, my God, this person's going to hold anything. No, I don't give yeah, a fuck about any of that. But, like, personally, just like, oh, damn. Like, I really couldn't even tell you that. Uh, we had a lot of call-ins from big artists and stuff like that. Like, damn, one of my favorite one, Actually, I got to say my favorite one was M.O.P. When they called in. That's it, big. It was on yeah, some, was like... like uh, it they're was, listening to your show, M.O.P. Yeah, they they were... No, That's, they were going to the Middle East. Okay, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Leeds um, threw me the alley-oop and... Shout out Leeds. He threw me the alley-oop on that one, and I got them so comfortable on my show where, like, <laughs> yo... Little Fame is saying wild stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Like, and he had to be like, damn, I'm imagine. on the radio right now. Chill. Like, yo, <laughs> all right, so what's the next question? You know what I mean? He was having a good time. He was good to time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was having a good time. Um, you can't hear that interview anywhere, so I, I don't mind mentioning that. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. They were saying some wild stuff where, like, yeah, you shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Pump um, the brakes a little. Shout out to yeah. Little. <laughs> and he, he showed mad love to me um, at the, because I, I, did I host that show? I think I might have hosted that show as well. I I did host that show actually. Okay. So I hosted the show at the Middle East, and um, you know, I, I for the, so many shows I hosted, I didn't care about meeting anybody. I really don't care about meeting anybody, anyways, because yeah. I'm not really big on small talk. Uh, but seeing this dude was really dope because when I met him in the um the green room, he was like, "Nah, take my number. We're gonna build a relationship." And he like kept up with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was cool. I, I haven't worked with them as you know thing, and I haven't kept up with them since like the overdog days. But yeah, yeah. That was one of the but first. But you never times. know. Yeah, and it felt like it wasn't like you know what I mean. Just uh, a, a, you know, some of the local guys would be like, "Oh, you're my brother," blah blah blah, trying to act like they're mad cool with yeah, me yeah, just yeah. to act. You know what? Drop it Hopefully whenever they get, want. Yeah. He was just being like, yo, I really like that interview. And I was like, damn, that was cool, man. Yeah. Um, You're like, shit, I did too. <laughs> the, the MOP one was really like my favorite. But then I'd say I'd have to give you a top three. My second one was Term because he was a local dude who, you know, obviously did his a crazy wild career. And when I say local, like accessible. Like, yeah, dude, this is he's somebody, always around, man. He pops yeah. up in shows all the time. It, he was accessible for us at the time to come in, into the studio, and that was a really good one because Term said, damn, like, that was, like, one of the most detailed interviews ever for me. Like, I, I think we went for, like, usually it used to be 20 minutes. You know, I'd go out, smoke a blunt, come back in another 20 minutes, yeah. come out, smoke a blunt, come back into a freestyle. 
that was like an hour straight. It that was like a podcast, but on the radio. Like right, we, right, we didn't right. play mm-hmm. music for like an hour. It was just straight like you got I, into a groove. Yeah, and also he had just did the album with Billy, and I was already cool with Billy at the time. And yeah. like so like that was like I dissected his basically you know not just his whole career and nothing like that, but like you know everything else that went into that. It was like the the personal levels and like it was yeah. cool. Like you know what I mean. It, and I I'm pretty sure he wouldn't get an interview like that anywhere else except yeah. for maybe like, you know, going to like a show off because that's his brother. Like, Static right. Exactly. So cool. Yeah. But even so then, you're saying, <clears throat> if I may, you're saying that nobody else around these parts would have been able to do an interview that well because they wouldn't have cared about the, the not, nuances not, of the artist himself. Not, not that, but that I knew Loman and like the shut up and rap was like around that time. Mm-hmm. That, you know, he was trying to promote that album and other albums in Turn Brady and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh, and Turn that, Brady. And that type wow, of mix I remember that to one. Be yeah. Asking those questions. And I was already that dude who was like hosting shows. And I'm not saying I was like, that. I'm that I dude, actually but. wanted to later on, maybe if we can get into how you got into hosting the shows too. Like, that sounds like a different story altogether. Oh, that, that was that like Marco Logo one. story I told you earlier. And then really? I was with Loman at the Davis Square Theater. And from there, it just stuck. And I was like, yo, I threw my little fee on there. And I was able to get in all the shows I was already getting into for free, but Mm -hmm. get paid to be there and host it. The only thing that sucked was I missed showing up for just the acts that I knew. Yeah. I'm not going to lie because, like I I said, I'm not really big on small talk, man. Like, y'all got me in front of a mic tonight. I figured, fuck it, I'll get loose and start talking and stuff like that. But once I'm, you know, talking about either myself or whatever it may be or talking with people, I just have a certain capacity that I hit. And I can't. I hear you. You, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. You know what? I know you how just, it is. You, you yeah. just. You, you're done. You just. I, like, I speak okay. about it all the time. I'm it's like, enough. yo, I I have a lot going on. I have a vision for what I want to do for certain things, and like I, I'm trying to maintain a certain frequency or whatever it may be. Um, and I just need to not talk to people because conversations bring you into. Drama. Sometimes. There's a lot. There's yeah, lots you know of I mean? shit. I don't involved. want none of that shit. It can just Let's bring you real. into a different energy too. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like when you get, like you have a good idea that you're hype about, and then you keep on. People keep asking you. Keep talking about it, and your energy towards that idea changes. Absolutely. You know, somebody else's opinion exactly. on what you plan on doing, or people's get, reactions get to what you're saying, and shit. Yeah. yeah, you just gotta kind of forget keep about everybody else's opinion. Man. You know what I mean? Just do what the, whatever you're doing. Just like it's hard to stick in that same yeah. mentality yeah, yeah. if you have a lot of outside noise coming in on but you. Real I'm, quick, I just want to throw this in there, man, because you brought me. up the Davis Square Theater and hosting shows. But that's how me and Chow first met. It's oh, at word. the Davis Square Theater. Thank the who was that? The name the uh, so it was, the it was oh, oh yeah yeah me it was me and Dro the Hairline yep, Brothers. Yep. Hairline we came through a ride. The only oh. HLB show ever. We just oh. performed at that Davis Square Theater. And I hosted and, uh, I think 40D and uh, my man King Swift were the ones who put me they onto that. That was, you the, were second, that was yep. the second show. The Rikertainment show. show. At, that, um, at that venue that I hosted, the third one got uh, kicked off and they just threw a burlesque show that night. That was kind of wild. Oh, I wow. actually, you know, that was the first time <laughs> I had like uh, hand selected a, or curated a um uh, a show rather they just was like yo who's popping because i was doing the show and they were like yo who's popping who should we put on there i picked like five out of six names and all my mm-hmm. homies showed up and boom they're like yo what why is this? these chicks were like you know i'm like yeah it's a burlesque show bro they fucking kicked us off <laughs> like damn but anyways <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that was dope meeting you there but then like me and you had um maintained a relationship in the sense yeah. of we met it, uh, again at overdog that's right you had me and don deaf up there and i was just going to comment on what you were saying about how you would stack up the artists because you know i didn't even see you before that like there was a waiting room and we were chilling in the waiting room with the other artists who were going on yeah, yeah. And, and i think that what you were getting at which is something that we should get better at is that you were making sure there was no conversation prior to us going in there oh yeah, yeah for because sure. sometimes you start the conversation and you have this awesome conversation before you get on air and then it's like, oh, well, shit, yeah, what, that was what are we going to talk about now? That was by design. Right. And uh, also, we wanted to have a melting pot. Mm-hmm. We wanted uh, relationships to build. And It was cool, man. I met a bunch of cool people that night. I think I met I met King Arthur that night. Yep. I met Mags. Who and, y'all are now working with. Yep. Maybe. And I met yeah. Loman. And these are all three people who I'm working with now. Yeah. And exactly. I met them all that exactly. night. It, yeah. You and Mags have done mad work together. How wild so is that? Crazy. 
It's um, crazy, but that's the power the overdog had, man. It was really a force. Yeah, we we, we wanted that, and that was the, pretty pretty much like the whole reason why we did it was to be able to provide like a safe space for artists to like kind of leave their ego at home and be like, yo, if Chuck, I was champ Chuck at the time. If Chuck yeah. vouches for dude. I'm going to fuck with them. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to build with them. It was a good intro. Yeah. It was like, oh, okay, well, Chuck's having them up. So, like, dude must be nice. Yeah, like, I had maybe. I just had that assumption. I'll be real. I had, like, five or six misses on that show. But, like, I, I have to, I, I take pride in, like, my booking for that show. Like, mm -hmm. how many dope acts who are now even doing crazy shit. I, and I'll never name names and be like, yo, we had that dude on first because I ain't trying to throw no yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But it's a lot it, of cats. It, and it wasn't even, like, me trying to say I put them on or nothing so that. That's just like sensitive shit that I, I just leave because you know. Yeah, sometimes. but you had a good ear. You knew you knew who, who exactly who was nice, and, and you had them up. And, and a lot of these cats have been successful as a result of how nice they were. You just happened to know. Yeah. So, Overdog eventually ran its course, and uh, after that, I stopped hosting shows. I kind of just got at capacity, and that's when I learned it was that was a pivotal moment. That's Did you I overload learned. yourself. You think with oh, that? Oh, all totally. That stuff? Uh, that a lot of late nights job. too, I bet as well. Yeah, I had just gotten married around the time in, in 2018, um, and I was doing crazy hosting shows, and you know it was cool because I, I met so many people and all that, but it wasn't for me. I always saw myself as the dude owning the club, not the dude hosting the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. when I took that role, um, when I took the role, it was because that's a good way to learn. I, oh, not even that like i'll be real with you i just been naturally that dude who would always be kind of talking yeah and I, I i got more comfortable not talking and once i got comfortable not talking like nowadays not as much uh you know with my friends and stuff you couldn't tell that but yeah, yeah. uh it's just different man like i i don't want to engage too much because i just like to stay on a certain frequency or whatever it may be but back then i was just like yo I, get, I like to get live. You know what I mean? I used to, you know, have a, they give sure. me my drink tickets and I'll smoke a blunt outside and go in there and actually be a fan of the show and be fucking pumped up for most of the acts or whatever. Mm. Some nights were, you know, were definitely phoned in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you couldn't tell. You right. Re you really couldn't tell. Um, it, just maybe some shows you'd be like, yo, Chuck, Chow or Chuck is a big fan of this artist or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that came to like a screeching halt for me. Um, that just like burned out. The radio station also shut down eventually, uh, right after that. So I'm glad we had stopped. Um, it, sh it shut down like a month. Got off right, right in time, huh? Yeah. Well, that's a damn shame, man. Did yeah, you see the writing on the wall there, or oh, did we, it just oh, yeah, kind of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, it, without you know making anybody feel bad or anything like that, it just kind of collapsed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it just. It, I feel like it ran its course. Um, it definitely. Because we used to pay to rent the equipment, and we didn't pay, like, crazy money or nothing like that. But in the beginning, it was kind of like, all right, it was 50 an hour. You know, you're booking three hours a week. Um, it, it was something that if we all just threw down and, like, had a studio or something like yeah, that, yeah. that would have been, like, a lot more, like, profitable. We didn't care nothing about the money. It was it was always on some, like, yo, we're going to do this and then book shows and then, like, pay people. and Yeah. You know what I mean? I was more interested in that. It's like a community thing. I had bread from other things, and, like, it, it wasn't even about money. So, but when I look back, I'm like, damn, we ended up spending, like, you know, 20,000 bucks or something like that from all, like, the, the stupid little shit we did, but it felt great. Like, yeah. That, that felt like what we needed You have no regrets do. about yeah, it. Oh, absolutely not. Um. But whatever, man, it, it, it was really cool. And then, you know, Overdog ran its course. I kind of took some personal time and people, it used to get crazy annoying when people would be like, yo, when is Overdog going to come back, bro? And I'm like, yo, I, I don't know. You tell me, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have the time for man. it. I don't have the, the capacity. You got to check that. <laughs> yeah. When it's not up to you, it's like, yeah, that question I, hurts me. Yeah, I would tell people, I'd be like. Well, because that's also I, an outlet that, you know, is now gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, so no, I feel so it. So for the for the for the community, it's like, oh shit. Like that's another thing. You, know, you lose ERS ten years ago, you lose yeah. overdog five years ago. Yeah, no, you it know, is a and, loss. It's, and it's uh you know, it hurts. No, it does. And 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 nowadays I'm a lot more like sympathetic with it. I'm like, yeah, man, because I do miss it now. But then I was like, so I was fucking I was burnt the fuck out. You were burnt, you were it. done. Yeah, it, I, it was I was fucking burnt toast. You know what I mean? I, yeah. was, I was done. <laughs> um but anyways. Uh, once I got past all that and big shout out to my wife because she met me when I was doing Overdog. She thought it was like the hottest shit ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to Sarah. I love you with all my heart, baby. You know you're my 
other half, my twin flame. But um, man, us men ain't shit. Uh, we wouldn't be nothing <laughs> without the women around. Us. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> she is absolutely. She's the better half. You know what I mean? Um, I love her with all my heart. And my dog Tank. Those two are like without them. I don't know. I I, I don't know how I'd be doing right now. But anyways. Um, nah, so she met me around that time. She was very supportive throughout those years, and I was kind of finding myself, and then I, I came up with the Chairman Chow idea. Um, I wanted to drop Champ Chuck because I didn't want somebody being like, yo, I knew I wanted to make beats, and I just was like, fuck it, I'm going to buy this fucking machine, uh, the machine MK3, the micro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I get that, and uh, I literally, I didn't know what a snare was. I didn't know what a kick was. I, I didn't know anything about beats, you know what I mean? And um, I and that was, thing's kind of, I mean, even though it's small, it's overwhelming still. Oh, there was a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, there was a lot to learn. And I still didn't learn, like, any more than, like, 2% of that shit. But anyways, um, I, I, I get that or whatever. Um, um, I had Mags Wood. You know, he was my best friend still um, to this day, but he was my best friend at the time. So, uh, well, one of my best friends, I just got a, I got a crazy good circle, man. I'm, yeah. I'm surrounded by, like, the greatest people I know, and I, I really can't even, like... Run. I I love these people, but anyways, I just gotta say that because when I'm when I'm on mic on, on the mic and shit like that, and I'm, obviously I'm drinking a little bit, and I just gotta shout them out, man. Shout out Supervisor Vega, uh, yo Jelani, you know what I mean. Uh, it's just shout out to y'all for having me. And shit. Great pronunciation, wow, yeah. that was amazing. Oh, one of the well, I'm adopted, right? And when I was younger, this dude um, I used to hang with was like his name was Jelani, and he used to take me to the craziest places and and. Um, I don't know why I said I'm adopted. <laughs> I, I am adopted, but I, I'm kind of drunk right now. But anyways, I... Uh, it's yeah, funny that you know Jelani. someone named Jelani. Yeah, no, Jelani. That I know not, one, too. That is not a, a very common name. And, 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 and I only, I actually know one other Jelani, but I, I thought that was weird. I grew and up then, with a dude in Cambridge named Jelani. But, and then when I met you, I was like, well, that's crazy. <laughs> and then 20 years later or some shit like that, I meet another Jelani, my boy Connor's best friend, who's a good friend of mine as well. Shout out to Jelani. But uh, yeah, man, anyways, uh, damn, I'm kind of... I'm getting buzzed right now. I'm not. Gonna, I'm <laughs> hey, you know what? Get down. It's fine. When we're done with the interview, I got a shot of Patron waiting for you, my bro. <laughs> I'm with that. I'm with that. Uh, so, yeah, Chairman Chow idea. Oh, yeah. So, boom. I become Chairman Chow because I no longer wanted to be Champ Chuck. I didn't want somebody being like, yo, oh, you can make my beat and interview me on the radio. And I'd have to be like, oh, no, I don't do the radio anymore. It's been like, mm-hmm. right. You didn't, it's it's been not a year me or two. anymore. You didn't it, want that baggage. Yeah. It, it would actually had been a full year um, since I had done the radio. And this is April 2019 when I got my MK3. And, you know, th- those were like some wild times. I was depressed going through some other shit just because I didn't have my outlet. I loved Overdog. Like, yeah. my team loved Overdog. Like, Mags Wood, Jay Hill, Loman, even my wife, she never did any like hosting or nothing like that, but she was a big part of the team. Um, you know what I mean? At CG, it takes a village. Yeah, my brother CG, who else? Damn, uh, Aztec at one point, like Sean Stees, all co hosting or, you know, getting down with whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connor Sees, that's uh, my absolute best friend. My guy. You know, yo, Sees is the most solid dude. Good if you dude. don't like him, I, I, I hate you as a person. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't even use the word hate because Connor's the nicest kid you'll ever meet. Yeah, and, so uh, if like, you don't like the him, then solid we don't, dude. We don't the need most you. Solid, he would never do you wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, he he was just shooting a video of me. Um, damn, he bought a drone just to be like, yeah, yo, I want to get down and, and do some video with you. Is that literally like my best friend? He goes and spends twelve hundred on a drone, right? So uh, you know, I pay him to do some joint, uh, shoots or whatever. But uh, it's funny, the the wind was like seven miles per hour and just takes the drone <laughs> on top of like this crazy building downtown <laughs> and this this whole crazy story. I'm not even gonna get into that. Crashed. It. Yo, crazy, crazy. Oh, no. C's just the most oh, no. solid dude, and he's going in there. I'm, I'm in there with him. I usually do the talking, but he was like, nah, I'm going to do the talking this time. I'm like, all right, bro, you go for that. Like, <laughs> this is wild right now. We had to wait like two hours to get the drone back. This, we get it back, shit's fucking like all crunched up. Oh, oh no. Yeah. I got the footage, though. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's we what got, counts. We got the know? video done. We got paid. So. Um, now, anyways, uh, these people, like the absolute most greatest I just got to give them their flowers. I, I, it's cool when I get my flowers and shit like that, but I got to give these people their flowers because without them, I would not be Chairman Chow. So anyways, I dropped the um, Champ Chuck, but I keep, kept the CHCH. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I wanted to keep that there, the alliteration, and also just the kind of if you do your math, 
you can find out I'm Champ Chuck as well. Because yeah, some people course. call me Champ Chuck on a record when they do songs with me. Like, uh, Chilla's done that on Irish Goodbye. Mm-hmm. All right. You know what I mean? And uh, Irish Goodbye is mad funny because Mags used to live with me and then he just moved. Like, didn't tell anybody. He told me, but, like, he didn't yeah. tell anybody. It was the Irish Goodbye and then we did that album. <laughs> as the follow-up to Triple Decker because that was the joint that we did when he was living <laughs> with me. And uh, I was the king of the Irish Goodbye when I was hosting because I knew just 70% of the room... I can't say goodbye to everybody. No, right. I'm gonna be too much you just flex. My hands are gonna be so yeah. dirty. You just gotta flex. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not even saying that all my friends are dirty. Just, you're doing stuff. You're drinking. You're gonna be spilling beer on yourself. Whatever. We gotta get out of here. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm out. I literally. I'd rather just. My bounce. wife knew the look. One and, of those hands is gonna be sticky. You know what I'm exactly. saying? <laughs> We're going to the car. I need that. I, even yeah. if I was, you know, giving everybody pounds, I'm like, nah, peace, bro. I just literally, I was the king of the Irish goodbye, so that's why that name. Yo. So in in light of that. Why don't we line up some music? Let's play. I, I want to hear what you've been working on. Um, Do we got anything and, from? Oh yeah, he I, I want to hear. Album, he man. could play it. Yeah. I want to hear. I want to hear what you've been doing, what you got going on right now, and then what's coming up in the future. Because I, I know you've been working hard. Yeah. I I'm mean, I'd love to hear. I'd love that. to keep talking to you, but I would. I want to make sure everybody knows what you're actually doing. Oh, also, yeah, I'm with that, bro. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I want you. We, um, I want you to get yeah. that. Should proper credit that you deserve my friend should we roll some cattle guard and then maybe we could chop it up about that yeah a little bit? you let's, want to do that oh yeah, yeah let's talk about cattle that let's talk about this Tuesday. cattle guard is what's dropping that Tuesday. That's what's up with that so real what's quick what's the official date it, the 19th 419 yeah because you might because i don't want to drop off on next four, week or some shit like that you yeah want. it should this should be out on 419 probably 419 right? uh, it'll, it'll be out yeah, we did it. We did everything the right way. No, but I mean this this episode of the podcast. Will be oh, out okay. Then. Well, right oh, yeah, anyway. yeah. It'll be out tomorrow. Um, but anyway, man, me, me and Chow and C's, we all went out to Vegas. The idea was to shoot some videos for Cortez Three. Yeah, number one album on the Supervisor Top Ten Albums of the Year, twenty twenty one. Classic. Y'all did that and, one though, right? And, that's right. We did do oh, that. Yeah. We'll get into that when we'll, we come we'll back. We'll get into we that, that when we come back. That that, that one's anyway, a special special. I'm trying story. to give you all the story of what happened with Cattle Guard. Yeah. I'm so just, we go I'm out saying, to Vegas. I, I have I have plenty of like physical copies of you guys' yeah, work. Nah, you know, like that. come on, I'm a fan. Yeah. My man. I'm a fan. I'm over here. I'm but over so, here now. So we go out to Vegas <laughs> to shoot the videos, right? And and we were like, well, fuck it. If we're going out to Vegas, let's record album while we're out there too. So me and Chow had made some beats together. He threw me a bunch of beats. We're out there in Vegas. Jack the rapper, my man. Nowhere to be found. Completely goes not. MIA on me, right? Thanks, and Jack. so I'm like, all right, well, let's just shoot videos for for this album then. So we recorded the album, shot video. So this has been in the in the in the tank for a little bit. It's been in the tank for a little oh, bit, bro. We we brought Aspire to the the hotel in Vegas, yep. and he got us a really nice hotel. Like we were in there, like a hookup. We were living good Lovely. for like the five days we were out yeah, there, yeah. right? And we're right next to the um, Cookies Hotel. The cookies, I'm the cookies uh, dispensary. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were next to the, I know what you mean. We were next to the... Damn, yeah. right? You we know what I mean? We're in the dispensary right, right now. <laughs> crazy shit going. But no, nah, we were... Uh, we were at the dispensary like every day getting really, really high. And like, you know, I wasn't drinking at the time, actually. So I wasn't getting... But I did some... I took some acid and went to strip club and, you know... Yeah. Uh, Okay. And you fear and loathing. It was like five fear and loathing type days with just like tons of recording and video shooting. Goodness and gracious. I'll be real with you. I barely go to strip club without my wife because she loves to get down as well. So like, hey, when, when the I, more the merrier. But it was awkward because I'm like, yo, I'm usually not the one talking. Like I'll be, and I got game because I mean, obviously I scored her. But um, yeah. <laughs> hey, she's, she's, she's the biggest, um, biggest accomplishment in my life. Hey, no, is, hey, um, listen, she is um, the championship belt right there, <laughs> for real, bro. You know? uh, but no, nah, like that. I'm usually that very hard with. Like, pat yourself on the back, my dude. <laughs> it, you know, it's usually like, oh, you know, they see her and the, and she's chill, and then it's just they, they hit it off. Like you know, strippers love my wife, and I, my wife loves the strippers, so. and and I love them too. You ain't saying nothing this week to exactly. Can oil you know how it is, and, and I, I'm over here like in the strip club on acid though and i'm like Oof. oh word wow it's and a whole I, new world and we were just like i'm starting to really feel it and i just seen through all the bullshit and i i feel bad because like this is this girl's job and of course she's trying to like you know make some money for herself mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, but sure. she, she's talking to me and she's a little drunk and i'm just like oh what's going on and i'm having like a full-fledged conversation and then she was just like you come here often she asked me like twice in a row <laughs> and, I, and, I, and i just kind of like Hit her with the fucking, you know, samurai blade and was like, go get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, she almost got like, 
a fucking I don't know. I, don't I'm know, not I almost that. got a dance out of me, but like, <laughs> it, it was on some like, yo, bro, I, I just couldn't deal with it because I wasn't drunk and like I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm on not, acid, bro. I'm like <laughs> I'm not I don't need all this. for Trying to vibe right now. Yeah, no, nah, but <laughs> Cattle Guard, man, that's dropping on Tuesday. That was a wild experience making that album. We shot one of the videos out there, um, which we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll talk we'll, about We'll get that, into that yeah. video for, because yep. that one, it was a really that, fun video. One that of the might most be a Crypt video. Online exclusive. Oh, yeah, right. That might be. <laughs> for yeah. a couple reasons. I, I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, which strip clubs? Um, <laughs> if you guys, I want to throw some strip clubs. The only by one you guys. That, the only <laughs> one that serves Palomino. alcohol. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't remember the name. I was on. I was like, tripping. Where you guys live? Because like I could throw. So like, have you guys been to Providence? Cause oh yeah, yeah down, of course. All they that. get down with the kid down in Providence. Oh yeah, you know? all that, bro. But okay. Vegas but got Vegas, shit on Providence. I've only been to Vegas <laughs> once before this, right? I was 13, and my parents brought me because... 13? They were like, yo, my parents loved Vegas. They went, like, twice a year for... That was their shit. They didn't do, like, anything crazy. Then My mother didn't buy, like, coach bags or, like, yeah. you know, like, she didn't buy Gucci or nothing like that. Um, my mother and my dad went to Vegas, and that was their shit. So, anyways... Uh, they wouldn't even like gamble. Like, like dad gambled a little bit. They just loved, really? they literally loved Vegas. Just, just like the, the ambiance of yeah, it. Going food, to, all that stuff. The food, going to shows, mm -hmm. the people out there, being able to just, you know, relax and stuff like that. And um, it's wild because when I went with them, I seen Howie Mandel doing, oh, yeah. <laughs> doing a stand up. And How old were you? I was 13. And okay. I, knew, I knew him from Deal or No Deal. Very yeah, yeah. clean cut. No crazy. Yeah, he's a joke. very filthy comic, bro. The dude before him set the tone for me. He, the opener was talking about like I get so high and va I just smoked weed for the first time like two weeks before. <laughs> Shut and, uh, up. So the okay. dude's like, I get so high in Vegas and uh, that he fucks with you. You know, you see a pair of tits melt and you're trying to lick them up off the curb. <laughs> I just remember that joke. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm like, very I'm well. trying not to like really laugh like, in front of your burst parents. out yeah. laughing in front of my parents. <laughs> And my dad's kind of like, ha ha. And uh, they weren't cool with it when I, they first found me sm uh, smoking or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They accepted it over time. I used it as a creational tool and all that shit or whatever. <laughs> but um, whatever it may be, like, I'm laughing so hard. And then Howie Mandel comes out. And, yeah, he's a very filthy comic. And I loved it. Yo, bro, I'm, I'm 13. Like, yo, what? My parents brought me to this show? The next show they bring me to is Mamma Mia. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that was, you know, me being 13. And obviously I heard worse shit because I had a computer at, like, 11. And right. I, I was, uh, you know, going through like, uh, what was the song sharing thing at, the, uh, like Soul Seek or yeah, or all those things, Green and, Wine or Lime Wine, yeah, Lime Wine. There we go. I didn't use Lime Wine. I'm trying to think of the one. Um, oh, it was like named after a uh, goddess or something like a Kazar. Nah. Oh, I remember that one too. Shit. What's it, Kazar? <laughs> nah, I forget. But anyways, yo, so. Uh, damn, I, I'm going off on of yeah, yeah. all the music. Yeah, we're, we're going off on all the tangents. Let's get back to the music. We need it. Yeah, I was wondering break. what kind of music you would want us to play because you oh, are play, play. If you we got the you arm. have you have been working with all the people. Yeah, I got like a lot of stuff. Seventeen joints or something. All like the that. people. Um, and it's a it, it's a great range of people. That's why you're here today. I yeah. like. Just randomly, like I know a couple of people that you've been working with, yeah, hence funny. the supervisor. You know, a lot of mean? friends of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, lot a lot of friends, friends of the show. A lot of friends of the show, and it's just like, damn, you have your you have your fingers in a lot of pies. Yeah, I'm big on working, man. I really good good for you though. I've been doing this Not full bad time thing. for like nine months so far. So I mean, I I've been doing video and music. I left my job August first last year. Uh, so eight or nine months. That must have been scary. Honestly, it was the best thing I've ever done in my life. Good for and, you. And also, it, it was scary because leaving like the constant paycheck. But I'm one of those dudes who, um, I really, I always say I'm fearless. I have my fears, but I am not afraid to do something. And to make that decision was the most pivotal change in my life. But without a wife like my 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 woman Sarah. Damn, I don't know if I would have done that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or at that that time, well, I had set the date like for March seventeenth that year, and I, was, I just couldn't do it. Like around the time that came, I I couldn't give my notice, but I gave my job like a, a month and a half notice because I I love that job. 
I, I don't think I made enough money, but you know what I mean? I had to like find other outlets and additional income streams and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I left my job and that was like the coolest shit ever because now I have time to do what the fuck I want to do. And that must be a huge weight off the shoulders though. Oh right yeah, yeah. And, but without, without video, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Mm. That, that's how I make that's my the bread and butter. Right yeah, now. yeah. You know what I mean, okay. like Chow Films, Chairman Chow is the artist, the producer, the you know I, I I paint and all that stuff as well. Like I draw and I do a lot of different things. Not as much as how I do. Oh, we got to link some of your uh, your stuff up to to oh, the yeah. site. For it's the crazy stuff. though yeah. because listen, man. Like every week, there's new Chow shit being posted on the Crypt. You just might not know. Oh, yeah. Like Big D drops a video, Oak drops a video. Like yeah. a lot of these artists drop a video. Chow did that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm big on, you know, building a relationship with people and they come back to me, man. They like I you know how it is, bro. If you learn how to work with somebody and I know exactly how you work, I could drop the price on some things or whatever, or like cut not not corners or whatever, but like cut some certain things out and be like, right, familiarity, you though, helps you know a lot. I mean? Also, you build a rapport with somebody. Mm-hmm. Work together. That's what it so, is. And boom. And you know, get a relationship with people. And mm hmm. You know, they they put a lot of money in your pocket, and that's and the then you shit. also can have a bit of trust with somebody. Oh yeah, yeah. you know. And well, then you have to keep the. Uh, it it also makes you have to uh, keep like a certain level of creativity and skill, because once that starts to drop, then you know those opportunities start to dry up. So oh, I mean, yeah, you yeah. always have to be pushing you yourself. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I'm big on you know. I don't try and monetize everything I do or nothing like that, but I just try and make my nut and I, I make more than that, obviously. And, and, and you put some away or whatever, but I try and make my nut with what I'm doing, but not compromising anything. Like yeah. I, I'm not trying to, you know, make some music. I've had to, I've had to do it a couple of times. I'll be real with you. There's been times where I've been like, Oh shit. Not when I left my job, but even when I was at my old job, when I'm just like, Yo, shit's expensive where I live, bro. Oh, yeah, I yeah. live in Dorchester where they're trying to gentrify that shit like a motherfucker. Like, right, yeah. Mm. Rent has mm. doubled, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, shit's crazy. But anyways, um, I, wouldn't, I don't know, man. It's just, <laughs> it's, that's the wild story. But um, there's definitely been some times where I had to do some shit I didn't want to do. And now I'm at the point in my life where that's not going to happen again unless you would really see me, like, unless I was trying to lock in and get some money to, like, put down on something crazy like i'm yeah, trying yeah. to like i'm trying to like invest in the next i'm trying to get the next twitter shit and i'm trying yeah, to put yeah, like yeah. 100 grand down on that shit and i wouldn't do it to compromise my art but it would be in the sense of like i'm trying to even stop selling my beat soon because i don't yeah. I, I don't want it to be like when when somebody sees me you know do a, a project or a beat with somebody you can't tell the difference if that person bought that beat or if that's my homie and I'm yeah. doing in the shit with them. And that's been the shit that like, and no offense to anybody, but just sometimes it just doesn't feel right. Like or feels off brand when I do music with certain people or certain songs that like you bought the beat and I'd had no say in what happened to it afterwards a- after that. Or, and like, I don't like some of the lyrics so they might not reflect my, you know, your I, vision you know, or whatever. Or shit like that. Speaking of, I think we just touched on something interesting. Gentrification. Yeah. Taking place oh, over yeah. there in Dorchester and a lot yeah. of places. And we happen to have, on this album, Cattle Guard, a very brief song called Gentrifier. Yeah, it's it's a what is it, about like a minute and a half or so? Yeah, man. Let's hit them with I'd, it real I'd quick. like to hear it because I'm very I'm very curious about gentri- gentrification <laughs> in Dorchester. You know me, I'm like I got a lot of a lot of family in Dorchester, so I'd like to hear Never drinking no hops and scotch or talk to the cops. Walk the walk to want my block to be knocked down and squashed. Getting drunk at August, y'all could call me Dudley Do Right. Mountie ride that bar stool like a fizzle ride a blue bike. Bro, you right. Fuck, I need to go to Cafe Nero for. Here too far, I spent my bread at places that ain't here no more. They got these lames moving in at top speed. I'm pressed. New neighbor with the coffee breath won't talk me to death. Win a green lifesaver. White savior, fuck you in the minds that your moms and your pops gave you. How this sweet greens and core power yoga going in on a block with porta potties, dudes are overdosing in. They say sharing is caring, but caring is sharing. Your location, color hair, and the gear that you're wearing. With the sheriff in there, and lies a problem we're facing. Cause all my partners caught some cases, fresh up off of probation. They just returned from vacation, they surely conquered a billy. I'm trying to talk all my people into targeting realty. How many listen? Um, so far, no one really. Your neighbor rides a recumbent bike, now you're starting to feel me. Y'all know that that's 
Just a third of four horsemen of the gentrifier. Semplify, gung ho to set your fucking set on fire. Let him buy your block up, he's guaranteed to knock it down. Walk around your own hood and see that you're the target now. Developers lurking the snatch cribs just like a crocodile. Was popping pal, your cribs a fucking target now. <laughs> Got him. I like that. I like that beat a lot. Here yeah, yeah, man. Chow like came him. with the heat. We got a bunch of man. I I picked all the beats no one else wanted. What? What happened? So that sounds a lot like it's funny. This album was pretty similar to the process of the loner, but just we did it in uh-huh. Vegas. Like we picked the beats where no one else was picking them. Uh, a couple beats on the loaner, I was like, all right, these are ones jo- other dudes wanted, but like, I need you to have some like crazy shit on here, me and Oak yeah. Country or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, okay. when, when me and Super made this album, man, like, I'm skipping around here. I skipped. No, no, that's earlier, fine. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, those, those, when me and Super we get made to all of it, me and Super made Cattle Guard. Um, that was kind of like a on the moment in the moment type of like yo we should just make an album on Vegas Super. this is just like, what I had and he had and we just put it together and yeah boom. like I made maybe three or four of the beats on the plane ride over um, I think I know why YouTube won't let you put this shit on there <laughs> nah that's not even that's it. not even <laughs> it though I'll show y'all what? the video man we got yo. do you want me to tell you the story about the video real quick yeah go on yeah right, please so we're please. out there shooting video right and we're on the old strip out by um the, the cortez and all that stuff right okay getting drone out footage. in vegas yep in vegas we're getting i got the ill snake skin adidas jacket on we're doing all these scenes okay and then we're like yo you know what would be ill man <laughs> sounds we like could, a lot if we could get some chicks in this video man that shit would really up the production value you know so we're out on the strip and there's all these like street performers and there's some that are like dressed like cops. We go up to them and we're like, hey, like I'm like, hey, you want, y'all want to be in this music video? And they're like, nah, fuck off. And uh, then we see these two chicks dressed as nuns. And I Uh-oh. go over to them and they just seem mad cool. I'm like, these chicks have a good energy. So I go holler at them. You know what I mean? And they're like, yeah, you want to pose with us or whatever? You know, I give them 20 bucks. <laughs> And we kind of take we take some photos like they, and some they video. They were cool with us recording. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, he pointed to cool. the camera and was like, yo, um, you know, boom. And they seen the camera and started going wild and being like, all right, cool. Like, fuck it. Let, let, it's let, a way let's to get make, out there. Yeah. yeah, let's let's make something out of it. Like, you know, and they started having mad fun in front of the camera. We had a good time. So anyway, we move on. We continue shooting. Eventually, Chow was like, yo, I'm going back to the hotel. Me and C's stay out. Go play some pie gal. I blow through like $100. Just get robbed real quick. Yeah. We, we come out of the... um out of the casino and who do we see walking down the way the but nuns the, the two nuns and i'm like hey what's up like, it was good to see y'all like i had a really good time tonight da, 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 da. y'all got a good energy and they're like oh thanks you get cool too i'm like yo do y'all want to be in this music video boom yeah like more and they yeah. were like yeah and he was like yo so we we're set gonna a go date. To red rock yeah so anyway we set a date i think it was like two days later yeah went and scooped them up shot this video and we got all this ill footage but these chicks are dressed up as sexy nuns right yeah they got the ill but you know it's all it, it's you know at least family friendly enough to be out on the old strip yeah yeah right um anyway <laughs> i tried to put it up on youtube they were like nah family friendly yeah. to who so, <laughs> what, 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 what so got las you vegas, flagged las vegas family <laughs> like, friendly is there nudity in it now they got pasties That's, on they said nudity but it's not there's no nipples showing no there's no nipples or nothing like that yeah, you know what no, i mean no, and I, i'm not saying that i would like want to play this for like my three-year-old right 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 my two-year-old godson or nothing like that but <laughs> um damn near like not nude it's not nudity bro like it's 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 I, I, it's YouTube I'm, safe, in my opinion. I'm, exactly. I'm kind of confused. So we're going to try you've it again. You've seen worse. Yeah, we'll figure on, some You've shit seen out. worse on YouTube. But I so, have. I have personally yeah, seen you I know, I know I have. 12, 13, 14, 50 million views or whatever the fuck it is. But it, it, YouTube it, showed me some man getting his head cut off. Yeah, yeah right. for real. Yeah. You're worried, straight up you're worried, you're worried about a titty? The Islamic State killing people. You kidding but me? You're worried about a titty? Anyway, this this changes the rollout of the album because Sweat Cito was the joint that we shot the video for. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, boom, Sweat Cito's the joint. Like, that's the lead off. But then our lead It's off, also my favorite video, too, that we did. It was just so, yeah. like, it, it, ca- that, that it captured the, the moment. Time, it right? captured the moment for sure. But um, so anyway, now we've switched it up. Turkish Get Up is going to be the lead off single. It's dropping on okay. Tuesday with the video. Uh, as well as the album, going to be on Bandcamp and streaming everywhere. But you're hoping to uh, to drop the uh, the Sweat Cito. And, the, yeah, well. and, and, we'll and within the next way. week, we'll figure out where to drop the Sweat Cito, Might even if Vimeo it is a CryptoOnline.com exclusive. 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 I mean, we'll get it up there for you. Yeah, man. Some shit like that or whatever it may be. That that video is um, it's hilarious because Special. I was like, this was before I left my job, and I was probably... 
what, like eight months into doing video at the time. Like I kind of knew what I was doing. Like yeah. I, knew, I knew to shoot, you know, 60 frames per second to get some slow-mo and stuff like that. But I, I wasn't locked in with the settings like I am now. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't as good with the, um, the just overallness of it. But when I went back and watched the footage and I was like good enough with the editing, I feel like I made that way better than I thought it was going to look because at the time I was confident, but then like we waited so long to do the the editing and stuff like that. Cause we just had so many yeah. things, other things. You were like, Oh, we is this a, footage going to be good enough? Yeah. We had a whole nother project that we dropped uh, method on miles. And you know, there was so much of that going on that uh, it was kind of hard to, you know, really think about Let it. Let me ask you that. Objectively, a question about like that, I was though. subjective about it. You know, are there too many projects at one time? Could that like a couple times that's happened to me, but not in the sense of like I feel overwhelmed. I just feel like I could have did more for those projects if I had the headspace to think about these things. But as far as I like think, yeah. promoting those albums, you know what I mean? Like if you have one and then you have one right after another. Does it feel uh, like you're yeah. not promoting one? A couple of times, so? not, not. I never felt like I promoted one less or more, um, but sometimes when they drop around the same time, I just feel like I don't know. I don't feel like negative about it, but I don't feel like always the most positive about it because I do, do you a wish, lot of work. Do you but wish I you would have shit. more time to actually, yeah, like, you know, yeah, you want give that shit to have to, a chance to marinate? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I want to drop the shit, but like, and you want people to absorb it, like, because you put a lot of work into all your projects. Oh, yeah, yeah. You nah. know what I mean? So you want people to actually like, be like, oh, this shit is dope. But like, sometimes if you do something, then you have something like a week later or like a couple days later. You know, like people just jump on the newest. Oh yeah, you know, without actually. And you know, I was going to say, like, the other in, one. in this yeah. day and age, it's really not. Unfortunately, there are no attention span. Yeah, in this day and age, it's That's kind of how really you have to do it, too, to stay. How you can, you know, uh, break through. Relevant or whatever. Either, like, unless, you know, you're kind of plugged or whatever it may be. I'm not saying there's only specific situations for you to blow up. And I'm not even trying to blow up. I'm trying to just do my no, thing. No, you're just yeah. trying to do your yeah. thing. I'm you know what I mean? Yeah. Thing. Oh, I understand and that. And, and this is the pace you move at. You know yeah. what I mean? And I respect that. I just know that Chow's always got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. But and unfortunately, so, I think just because like me just being a consumer, right now, you know, I'm like, like, I'm, I'm like, you know, I know the supervisor, but. Yeah. I also try to keep up on music, you know? So, like, sometimes he's like, I got this project, but I also have this other thing jobbing with somebody else, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, it's a lot of things that we have to keep oh, no, moving the, the, on. The, the most beautiful thing about that, though, is cross-pollination. It is, but yeah. I, I feel like sometimes I don't have the chance to, like, really... Um, really consume one thing because I'm just like, oh, I want to check out this other thing. Like, also. what's the listener's you know band I mean? with, right? We're always oh, yeah. thinking but, about like, as an artist what you're being I want, with. I want to do it all, but I just don't have the time to I think really consume it before I have time to grab that other thing. Go ahead. Sorry, Vega. That might be a problem with our age, too, because we're older and we come from, like, a different place of listening to music where we would listen to an album whole for year. a whole year, two years, you know what I mean? <laughs> now... There's so much stuff coming out that you want to hear and that you enjoy that it's kind of like difficult to absorb all of it. You know what I mean? Or give something a really good run. So you have to kind of pick and choose uh, what you listen to a little more. You know what I mean? Uh, which makes, I think it's great for the listener though, because you have so much stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, oh, I, I missed something from Chow. But it's and not, then I look at the catalog and I'm like, what's that? And then But I'm, it's not great for the listener because I feel like we miss shit. Nah, here's the thing. I feel like I miss shit. Because, like, gonna... peep, like, um, uh, I liked Vince Staples' uh, yeah. album last year uh, t called Vince Staples, but he just put out a new one, like, a week ago, two weeks ago. And I'm like, fuck, I got to hear this. But he just hit me with something that I thought was, like, maybe the best shit of the year. Nah, last I think year, but now I need to jump on this new thing. It's just like yeah, nah, I feel I, that, I, I have so many things to listen to at one time. I'm sorry, I didn't it's mean not going nah, some off. shit gets left behind. I'm sorry, yeah, you're right. I, 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 I hate, but I hate to not be able to have the chance to listen to something that well, could be magnificent. Yeah, you know, yeah. I want, I want to hear it all. I'll be real with you. I don't even listen to music like how I used to. I used to run the, the radio show and listen I, to so much. I'm, music. Yeah. I'm sure it's just now like I overload. To like 
pretty much like half my own shit, half like the stuff I'm comfortable with in the sense of like not influencing my sound so much. And like, mm. also like, that's, you know, that's, you know the, what that's, I mean? a, that's a problem. Yeah, I was going to ask you that it changes things, but here, here's what I'm, Definitely. I'm at with it. When I release something, Cause you don't, you don't want to be not, listening to other people yeah, yeah. just so you could have a, a Oh yeah, I don't want to do none of that shit. So I, you I, want it all to be up here. I might check something once and like, you know, I'll go back to it if I really like it, but I try not to have anything that's going to like, change my sound or mm-hmm. like without me wanting to change my sound or i no. think with that though too it's like you're not listening to rap or hip-hop beats all the time yeah you know what i mean exactly like you were listening to a plethora mm. of like other genres like you know what i mean you could shit, be listening like, to or you're digging right so yeah. you're like oh maybe you're listening to soul some one day right maybe the next day you're listening to who knows maybe some just random piano shit you know yeah. what i mean and you're like okay but you're getting your uh your feed for music that way you know what i mean but you're just uh you're absorbing different styles of music. Exactly. You know I mean? And let that influence you. But yeah. here's my thing with it. When I release music, I, <laughs> I, I never do it for like, you know, just trying to like pop off and like, you know, get people to fucking fuck me. Like, these are all like, for the most part, there's been a couple of times where I've released some music that wasn't necessarily like reflective of this, but it's all really planned out. Like, like I take my time with it. Me and the artist either like connect on something and that's like what we do and there's just too many people I know that, like, if I didn't release the albums at this rate, I wouldn't be able to have the headspace to make the next album that I want to make. And, and also, when I put these albums out, if you don't have the capacity to get to it now, I understand that pretty much more than I understand music. Because I, once, I, like I said, I learned about the capacity thing. I, I just I understood, like, how people act, you know, when, you, when you're with your homie. Or, like, even when you see certain people, you know, whatever it may be in there, just at capacity, you just have to respect that. And there is a, you know, I, I, I feel like I don't oversaturate it, but there's a very thin line, and I'm pretty much close to that. I respect that, and I understand that. But um, I don't feel like I'm there. But uh, when I put the, this music out, this music isn't going anywhere. You can go back to that if you get reminded of this album and you're like, damn, oh yeah, I forgot to check this out. Let me check this out from child. Or when I drop this on vinyl, that's going to open up a whole new thing uh, or a whole new fan Different base. lane, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Different or when I drop it on cassette, well. when I drop it on CD, mm-hmm. um, moving forward, things might change. I might drop the CDs and the vinyls and the cassette with stuff. But this kind of like, you know, me putting out the the product that I want to put out is is what I need to do right now. You know what I mean? This is what I wanted to do in the sense of like a long-term thing of having all this music that I, I think is dope. I wouldn't put it out if I didn't think it was dope. And it will live forever. Yeah, exactly. So you, you, you'll be able to, to, to check that out. Like, let's say after this interview, you're like, oh, I liked what he said here. Boom. Let me you'll go check out some check- of his old shit. Absolutely. That's all there for you. I'm going to get, you know, all of that connect with that music, whether or not it was recorded in, you know, 20... 19 or 2020 or whatever it doesn't have to be new you know it's new to you what i enjoy about your workflow is that like you're working with the supervisor but a lot of the times i feel like you're just not like throwing beats out there you're actually taking the time to like create a project with somebody you know what i mean so then now it's like it's instead yeah it's exactly it's a collab instead of like yeah i made the beat for so and so i threw a beat at this guy I, i got a beat over here and you could be collecting a check that way but like you're making art, you know what I mean, yeah, with, with someone definitely. else, you know what I mean? So it's like you have so many collab albums, and I think that is a good thing because there's so many times where, like, me and J- Jelani are listening to an album. We're like, oh, who did the beat on that? Who did the beat on that? Who did the beat on that? But then we can hear this, and we go, we know who Chow did it. Chow yeah, did it all, I and this is sick, you know what I mean? And, and, maybe, and maybe someone, you know, the, the rapper as well on there maybe has some influence as well as to what's going on because once again you guys are working together you guys are trying to create a sound together yeah you know what i mean and that shit i think makes all the albums sound so much better appreciate that you know what i mean because now you have you you have more stake in it as well you know what i mean because that's absolutely true because i don't mean to you know no disrespect to the god but like when you hear a premiere beat you know what I mean? It was just something about it that was just like, oh, that's Primo on that beat. You know what I mean? But like when it's a Chairman Chow track, you know what I mean? There's something about the way that it sounds and like, you know, different things. You know what I mean? Do you want to have your own sound? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like, 
everybody every, everybody puts their like stamp on it like you know they have to make like a different like you know ad lib or not but like yeah. i think your sound should just speak for itself and See, i think yours does that what i actually what i try for is for my sound not to have a sound if that makes sense <laughs> like I, tr- I actually try not to but it ends up being a certain way like no matter what like i've made some pretty like out there beats where yeah. like uh you know i wouldn't necessarily like ask anybody else to rhyme over this shit except for like one or two people i know and these people will be at my crib and hear that beat by accident and then that happens and also, there's some times where I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm about to sample some like weird shit. And I'm about to go yeah, yeah. find some old video games and sample some shit that shouldn't be sampled. Yeah, yeah. Mangle the sample and then throw some hard drums on that shit or whatever it may be. And uh, uh, uh you know, I made yeah. a. Speaking of this process, man, we uh, there was one beat in particular that actually is for the lead off single that's dropped yeah. on the 19th. But Turkish Get Up, me and you basically sat down and did that together. Yeah. And that was a sample we had had our eyes on for a minute. And it really, I think, was the last beat that came together for the whole album. <coughs> Ended up being the first joint. And this okay. is, and, and the the beats kind of bugged out. Like when I say, like I aim to not have a sound. Tell me about. But it. I feel it, like it, this is your sound. Like to me, Turkish get up. Tell me is, about it. This shit says chow say, all over it. I, I feel like it's not. It's funny. Like I'm not saying it's like, like I'm not like. It's not, not your it sound. Like, yeah, but, but you don't like, think it's your signature. I don't think it is. You know okay. what I mean? Like I'm not afraid to put out something that is not like a hard beat i'm not afraid to put out something that is not like my sound or my signature because i like to have fun with it man and yeah anyway, yeah okay I, I, I vega get... why don't we play this track and let's, let's jump back into that convo when we come back all right and that was I, I would uh, i want to dig into this this is the second joint off the album yep. all right the uh, old turkish, turkish get up the old turkish get up the old turkish get up <laughs> oh yeah I'm, I'm curious about that. that that's no doubt, yeah, I'm out here getting big. Squirrel kid making pilgrimage. You could barely muster the will to live. So damn prosperous, it seems preposterous. Neiman Marcus electrolysis is for the broads I'm with. Careless, how I like this. Yo. Supervision in the chairman, it's a world premiere. Give the word to prepare so they heard this clear. No shrooms on us, even no sherm to share. Prices judge Mills Lane, bitches firm but fair. That's how I cop the triple decker, Eli Disco Tecker. All while ducking attempts from your sister to grip my pecker. No short side, better, big better for six and better. Misadventures of a different texture that live forever. Big Shexter, cash, roll my publisher's clearing house. Your last known whereabouts is your parents' house. Plus, your label says they passing on your project, moving on. Whole album. I'm about queuing on, what am I doing wrong? Fat and out of shape, ass whack and out of date. Mad at successful rappers and acting out of hate. Unbalanced like a triple beam without a counterweight. While I'm maxing out my gates, fresh back from out of state. If you have to calibrate, how much effort will it take? Your chances like method man giving back your killer tape. No pimping and pandering, y'all just simping and slandering. While I'm dipping out to Vegas, hit the strip with big management. I'm extra patient, never made moves from desperation. A stress over my comfort, I'm focused on destination. This special meditation. Now my bread is levitating Get your center excavated for some better ventilation If you ever said a statement this blatant Your chest is caving I'd be waiting on arraignment for a Fed investigation With Mulder and Scully asking me questions on how it happened My alibi is pile up and plowing and power napping Drinking, bumming cigarettes and not much else All while trying to get this guap up I'm not much help Buenos Diaz I never read who no Diaz Got no use for knee pads and never give birds a free pass Egads huh. I'd rather relapse than listen to the shit you're saying Bitch, go take your wheat grass. I drive the hardest bargain while your Kia needs some work. And like the guy who fixes it, my people need some perks. Top four luxury suites to fuck with these beats. Don't ask the kid to bust a freak, cause nothing is free. Hire clowns, you get a circus. My purpose is murking heads up. Certified Grievic who mastered the Turkish get up. Get up. Fuck y'all doing? A great drill for your whole body. What you gotta do again is to push your arm up all the time. That's gonna keep you strong and stable. So imagine it's all tight, all around you, right through here, everything, everything, you're pushing up. You're always looking at the back. One time for you, I'm mine, and it don't stop, don't quit, supervisor, oh, shit. Sweat, see, though. 
in one and wet the free throw. Big bread, no eat and keto. Slide around that vestido. Meet me at the mercantile. I make it worth your while. You can go to work a while on my vertical smile. That's what she said to me. Term again. Tighter than a tourniquet. That little death eject my soul directly to the firmament. Protect my solar body with this sweatsuit of cheap. Fresh jewelry for super. He's the best new MC in your microcosmic orbit. Boo, it's just you and me. Reverse polarity and she adjusts beautifully. Kept the precepts. Stay sitting position at half lotus. And never even once did I wish that your ass noticed. That's focus, cat's bogus. Claim the caption that's closest. But left out one essential matter that's dosage. The difference between medicine and poison is how much you take. Break a sucker proper with the mantra I enunciate. You busters fake the funk. Fuck, even your pump is fake. Understate, I hopped up on this bump and break and dumped away. Crush a snake like my famous track jacket was a stake. Never passed up a chance to advance for comfort's sake. Stay running place from pick and roll to give and go to get the dough. You're quick as living miserable. This kitchen's inhospitable. Can't stand the heat and dip. They scheme and peep this piece of shit. Cooling in his sweatsuit. I bet you never seen this drip. Sweatsito. In one and wet the free throw. Big bread, no wheat and keto. Slide around that vestido. As above, so below. Peep, bro, you know the steelo. Go get the supervisor. He's the best we know. Sweatsito. In one and wet the free throw. Big bread, no wheat and keto. Slide around that vestido. As above, so below. Peep, bro, you know the steelo. My schedule wide open. Y'all just let me know. Bro, I'm worldly refined with a world leading grind from an earlier time where the Earl Stevens wine. Fuck a vodka, about to start my own brand of Metoxa. Time to pass the span of Copa to you fucking malacas. More sweat suits than Nelly with a double disc, you summer bitch. Serving natural supplements while ducking several summonses and running kicks. Comfy fits and all the flying company mix. The dope whips with banging systems bump these hits. I'm fucking rich. Working hard plus the kid invested right. Why you thinking if you'd been in bless your spit it just as tight. Best advice I can give to try to live a better life for you is put down the flashlight and get some rest tonight. Mind the fact is mind the factories with master's degrees. The supervisor drives a hard bargain, cancel reprieve. I offer guidance, but I'm not attached. You act as you please. I got the sense not to try to walk a cat on a leash in my sweat In one and wet the free throw. Big bread, no wheat and keto. Slide around that vestido. As above, so below. Pete, bro, you know the steelo. Go get the supervisor. He's the best we know. Sweat In one and wet the free throw. Big bread, no wheat and keto. Slide around that vestido. As above, so below. Pete, bro, you know the steelo. My schedule will wide open. Y'all just let me know. For everyone that appreciates, like, a bunch of free albums. Okay. You're going to have to repeat that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're back. We just heard a couple joints off the off the cattle guard from the supervisor and chairman Chow. Yeah, hey, man. yo, yo, Turkish, get up and sweat Cedo. <laughs> Very good, dude. <laughs> Prepare your names on this shit. As hey, well. I just want to throw this plug out there real quick. While I got the chance, we're doing tapes on this one. Oh yeah, hit the supervisor wins. Dot bandcamp. Dot com. I have a tape player, and you're gonna get yourself a as limited edition cassette. Uh, of Cattle Guard with the beautiful cover. Yo, shout out to... Yeah, is that the cover with the titty? Steph Caffarella. My homegirl, Steph. She's a beast uh, with she it. She is an absolute animal with the uh, graphic design and just the vision of... Uh, and her art is ill. Yeah, her Peace. art is, is, is super dope. Um, we... you, I'm, I, I'll be honest. Like My wife can paint. My best friend, Jake, can paint. I can paint. Or not like crazy. I'm not trying to brag like I'm a crazy good artist with the paint. I just have no... Like it's okay. You can pat yourself I, on I the try, back. I try not to limit myself with the shit. You know what I mean? I try to do what I want to do, and if I like it, and I feel like it fits the art, I'm gonna roll with it. But we wanted to use somebody different this time, um, and I had and Steph does sexy stuff. Yeah, you know, I had already wanted to work with Steph in a different capacity with a different idea that I'll yeah. I'll keep off the books because I'm still gonna use it. But I want that. I to need be to like see this video type thing. And I know, uh, man. And because I, I like her art a lot, and she does zines as well. And like, I already had a couple zines of her work and stuff like that from my wife because she's into all of that. And um, boom, so we worked with her. And the y'all, art, seem, y'all seem freaky deaky. I want to hang out with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, the, y'all living a life. We are living the life, god damn it. But, okay, <laughs> shit, we Top all floor, out here. Beautiful Top floor luxury suites to fuck with these beats. Y'all, y'all boosted <laughs> up. Y'all got y'all double, double vaxxed and boosted. We might need to hang out, man. Yo. We doing the shits. You know, a beautiful woman with it sets out on the cover is Listen, not, is, I'm, isn't looking, an original I'm looking thing, at the cattle guard. Gu- yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm looking at the cattle guard. I'm like, okay, we're doing it. We got titties out. You know, we're doing fine. Okay. 
We're all adults here. Yo, the titties let you know We're everything's okay. We're all adults. There's some puffy okay? titties, too. Exactly. Yeah. I'll see you exactly. guys. We can and meet. That's disarming. We can hang out. You we see can, a puffy titty. <laughs> if, if, if couples Put meet, if couples Put meet each other at this strip club, you know what it is. You know, it's just like okay, we're all down for the get yeah. down here. Right. Let's let's do this. I'm cool. And, You're cool. Hey, El Cortez <laughs> four. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is, right? Yo, kind of cattle guard is weird, man. Because <laughs> I, I did, I never meant to spend so much of my time rapping in Las Vegas. But Yo, it sure ended up sounds, happening. This sounds about a lot that? different, though, in my opinion. Than, oh, it does. It's than, way different than the other um, the other stuff. The you've Cortez done. joints definitely mm. different. Well, we knocked that out in like two days of recording. Um, really, we only spent like two and two or two and a half days actually recording music. Yeah, the rest of the time we were just fucking around, you know, shooting video. We just brought the Spire, which is the Isotope. Out, shout Isotope. Shout out to Isotope. Um, uh, they had brought a microphone by Loman Shop at the time. Uh, which was the Union Sound, and to keep the uh, long story extremely short, I made a lot of albums on that thing. Like, yeah, because of how easy it is to use, and you know whatever it may be. Very user well, friendly, man. Very okay. user friendly. Records right to your phone, and um, it's a microphone. Yeah, I won't even try and sell those things. I, I, I sold so many of them things. For yeah, them, like and uh because we were selling them out the shop you know what i mean and like i i just would use it and show people i'm like yo and like it, the album just started racking up and, and you recorded a couple oak lone tree albums with it as well we I did believe. one in a tree even you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like, I, like, I was literally. gonna ask you about the tree album that that's that's how easy that shit is to use like we brought that shit outside just make sure it's charged and <laughs> it connects to your phone and boom, you can just record that shit wherever. Um, obviously, there's some, like some bleed over of like crickets and shit, but we wanted that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to ask you, man. Authentic. Yeah. Like, what was the what, what kind of sound did you get out of that tree? Can no, we just explain listen, the whole thing? Yeah, real yeah. Quick? Hold on. Let's start from the beginning. Can we just explain the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Oak. Um, that's my brother. Like I got Oak a wild friend of the show. show. Hold on. Yeah. Oak. Going. We've all known Oak for. Yeah. 20 years. You many know. moons. Many Man, moons. Yolani's probably known him on, on 25 years. Um, Oak is definitely like my brother, man. Big shout out to him. Uh, he's one of those dudes who like, when I started making music, I, I threw dudes a bunch of beats or whatever. We made The Loner like pretty yeah. much right after I made The Pilot um, and actually before I released Triple Decker. Like we had stopped recording it and it just took a while to get it all like lined up and everything. Like we had that that was like the second album I recorded was The Loner, was with Oak. Uh, it, it, it's one of those feelings, man. Dutch Burner right there. Wow, you got the... That's the album that I got introduced to with Oak Lone Tree. And then blah, blah, blah. Long, long story with Oak. That's 10 years ago, this one, Dutch Burner. Can I see that, man? Yeah, and um, so he came over and recorded The Loner before Corona. Uh, once Corona hit, he was like, yeah, like I, gotta, I just got to be careful with the kids and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to not be recording. I'm going to get my own setup. So that was, I knew the loner was done re being recorded. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And we were there. We, we landed at 11 tracks. There's a bonus track at the end once you keep listening. Um, there's, you know, the two interludes or whatever. We kept that exact same format for the loner too, but we were shooting the video for Earth Tones off the loner. And it was one of those situations where I'm walking around. I'm not going to lie. I was on a micro dose some shrooms or whatever, <laughs> oh, I, I, which I thought was a micro and it was kind of more on the macro side. <laughs> and um, my man was shooting the video and this is my boy. Uh, I, I don't want to put his name out there because I don't want dudes hitting him up for videos because he doesn't do that shit no more like that. But anyways, you, you can do the, the, the your, your homework on that. And this is, you know, one of my dudes who like doesn't do music videos anymore. He's like doing like, you know, big gigs or whatever. Uh, He's got a, uh, he run, he's got his own company that he's running and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. So I hit him up and I was like, yo, I need a music video. And w we shoot the video and he, he's like pulling out like the red cam. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. He's got like a fucking $10,000 yeah, setup to shoot, to shoot my fucking music video. And I'm like <laughs> over here like, yo, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, he ends up doing me a crazy good favor. You know, it, it was at my wedding and all that stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Really good friend of mine. Uh, I love you, bro. Thank you. For that and other reasons. You already know the deal. But anyways, uh, you know, we're shooting this video and I'm like dosing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm walking around and I'm like, yo, bro, I've been thinking about this shit for like weeks. We need to do an album in that fucking tree right there. And he's just like, what? <laughs> Oak's been sober for like six years at this yeah, point, yeah, right? Yeah. He's real? looking at me like, child, bro, you, 
You need to chill. <laughs> you need to chill. <laughs> 20 minutes later, he walked past the tree again once we finished the video. He was like, maybe we'll do a song in there. We did New Lab in there. And he was like, nah, that song's called New Lab because this is the new lab. We're doing the whole fucking thing. <laughs> like, it had a like a moment that day. Like the energy clicked was, with him. The energy was different. And he was like, bro, there's like something crazy about that hill. It's in Seven Hill in Dorchester. Yeah, yeah. And I've always felt that way. And my homie who passed away, rest in peace, Derek Madalena. I love you, bro. Um, he lived over there and his backyard was kind of like right behind there. Yeah. So I really wanted to do that album with Oak and Thank you for trusting mm. me on that. And he absolutely loves that album. We got like great. That album did great for yeah. me, like as far as like response. But there's two of them now, series. right? Uh, where, yeah, that's TL2. We had the loner that was recorded at my crib. That's TL2. We got TL3 on the, in the um, already recorded. How long uh, in between the first one uh, to the a, second one? A year. One? A year. But they were recorded like. In the same, uh, oh, wait, no. TL2 well, was I, recorded. I was going to get all nerdy and I was going to be like, is it like because of the seasons changing? You have to wait till uh, we, the acoustics uh, are right. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, that's funny you say that. Uh, we actually did some all across the board. Like, usually with us, we meet up once a week and we do like a song or two or like whatever it may be. Some weeks we just work on like getting stuff ready to get dropped or whatever. But me and Oak meet up every single week. Uh, it's been for like two years now and it's the point where like we were just recording and sometimes it would be a TL2 joint sometimes it'd be something else he started recording other albums one and done um he, he would record. oh so you guys have been consistently working together oh yeah, throughout yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, me and him got like just, a, not just different projects really good chemistry when it comes to recording like we just understand each other like and boom, just getting shit knocked out, and like we'll hang out for like two hours, and then like record like fucking three songs in like an hour, you know what I mean? But to me, it's just because we understand each other. Like I know if that's not the take, and he knows that that's not the take, and he he's not sitting there double, second guessing himself. He's very confident. He knows how to move, and he doesn't have that much time to be there. So mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We just got yeah, he's get got it a done. lot of stuff going on. Yeah, he's you got know? two kids, all yep. that shit. You know, shout out to Oak Lone Tree. That's my brother, man. But we got TL3 recorded. That was actually recorded before we even put out TL2. Um, is that back in the tree or is nah, that? No, nah, that was back at my crib. Okay. Uh, is it just too hard to be uh, getting out to Savin Hill and recording in the tree? Like, that's what nah, I was going to ask. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, we already kind of knew that I was going to start taking over mixing and mastering one day. And Lightfoot was the engineer on both the first two projects. And he's an absolute fucking How did he feel legend. about the Shout sound that came brother. out of the tree? He loved that album. But how did he feel about the sound when you gave it to him, the actual raw vocals? He loved it. He was like, oh, this shit got an ill sound to it? He said, this is something special. And, like, honestly, my that's my brother right there. And I think uh, I kind of overwhelmed him with how many, like, albums I sent to him to get mixed and mastered. <laughs> like, literally, like, probably well, too many. Like, and that's kind of how I got put on to you, too, because, like, uh, Dart was doing some stuff at Union Sound with Lightfoot, and then that I saw... That you were doing with some stuff with Lightfoot. So also oh, yeah. saw that Loman was doing stuff with Lightfoot. Uh, There's another dude I was I remember following too. Uh, I think it was like Ezra or something like that who who was uh, kind of following you guys at the time. And uh, I was like I just got really into your music at that time. Oh, so, right, that's yeah, what's yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. So it was oh, kind yeah. of like a I don't know just a random yeah paths crossing. You know what I mean? Nah, shout out to him. And when I say like I sent him too many, that's a joke. Like yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. like as an engineer, he's gonna want work. He, he's <laughs> glad to you know take some work. Thank on you. And stuff like that. <laughs> I'm sure after a certain point, he forgot which album was which album. At, at, right. At, with how much music I sent him, you know what I mean? And like this one really stood out to him, and that was the one that he kind of said more than you know. Yeah, he, he would say stuff's dope or whatever, but like he was like, "Yo, this is special. Y'all should do something with this. Like y'all should." Uh, Fucking whatever, talk to Eyes and Tope. And we, we never really got around to it. We just yeah, wanted yeah. to put it out. Um, we should have. We totally should have. I feel like we I know you could have got some little promo from them, yeah, man. Come shoot I, a little video or whatever and talk yeah. about the process, right? Because like you I, can't do that with just any setup. Yeah, Only like, Aspire. Uh, yeah, you could have been in like a documentary or commercial or something. Yeah, like, like we that shot a video it. for it, New Lab. Yeah. Um, and we, we did that and we kind of we recreated the day that how that happened. And yeah. It doesn't come off as much and. You know, sometimes we're a little vague in the in the descriptions. We kind of just put the credits and, and keep it rolling or whatever. But uh, 
Yeah, we should have probably explained that one a little bit more yeah. just because it was a Sometimes special time. Sometimes you're a little Vega. Yeah. Hey, Vega, <laughs> yeah. um, well, let's play some more music from these gentlemen. Let's promote the, you know, the, you the know what, witness. Birdman, I just I have one song in particular that makes me think of you and Vega. It's called Elliot oh. Often. <laughs> and I want to play this for y'all because Big I know you, wait a minute, you guys wait a know minute. who Elliot Often is. Yeah, we might be the only people that you, know who you <laughs> well, might be the only ones. And we got samples from but, the man himself in the songs. So. But I have a couple of questions that I want to get to after this song. All right. Sounds good, man. All right. All right. Let's get into this real quick. Peep, Steez. It's been a long time, right? What do you mean the situation? That's still that's I'm walking into the studio, right? Yo. Yo, got a sniper but a knife, plastic cutlery Slap whoever told you that your ass could fuck with me Give me now my daily bread and that's enough for me Every dick rider lost the lap of luxury Scrap to catch a view of what they'll never have access to Diagnosis access to I don't know what that has to do Of course not, that's classic histrionic behavior Narcissists can't listen if it's not in their favor And what I'm jotting on paper, clearly not meant to praise you It's a tough pill to swallow, esophageal dysphagia Y'all cretins gonna need a speech language pathologist these beaks aiming at my main vein like phlebotomist copyrighted gifts and drop hints that they want his kids when prior to my arrival that thought did not exist made a think about it. special ed on a hovercraft manifesting something from the void like a thunder crash right. legs caved up gangster look right bulging calf muscles right so you're showing off your right. legs you dress more manly. Right. All right, listen. Got a borderline on my line that's known to be depressed. Said I know that we the best. I wasn't overly impressed. Manic phase looking like he's batshit crazed. Music videos like Hathaway's was back in the days. Vampire peeling on some based out techno shit. Set to get the grip but haven't met the prerequisites. Got many reservations. Don't respect your expectations. Better take a second to temper your expectations. I'll be dead or destitute before expressing respect for you. Shred my seminal vesicle infinitesimal. Decimals. I execute to get this loot, but mortar and pest will do. I bested you, you best to do the shit that's been expressed to you. Back to work and practice for rapping, and yes, y'all. And snatch that polo patch off your chest, your crest falling. You're the top choice of them all. The mirror tells me it often. Popping shit, you sound crazier than Elliot off. Stop, you mean a teratomatous carcinoma. Dehydrated, Dehydrated kick kick hexic, hexic, epileptic. Diabetic, right? That's what I almost made you look like. Right. right. He's just a, a plethora of crazy samples from that guy. He was one of the most insane people on that show. He's cuckoo. And I feel like, you know, Stern kind of inspired this whole thing. I don't know if the two of y'all would have felt like, oh, yeah, we should do like a radio type show if it wasn't for Stern. I don't know. That's just always the feeling I had. I never asked y'all about that. Big influence on me. I mean, yeah. I started listening to him in like 94. Uh huh. Whenever he came on uh, air in Boston. When they put him on BCN. I remember his first show. Yeah. I listened to it. I used to tape it every night. Yeah. And For years. And then they used to start, they started playing in the morning. Are you right? What's right. That? Honestly, I never thought about being a, you know, radio type personality before Stern. Yeah. yeah. Probably not. No, I knew it. I knew it. I'm like, yeah, I know how much you love Stern. I was like, yeah, this is oh, why. Oh, man. This is I why never Bonafide thought about wants to like do this because he just, he's, he's, got, he's got it in him. But Howard had a a weird way of interviewing people. Yeah, that that just like they felt comfortable when they were in his you know realm. Uh huh. Like Howard would just like ask like the most random of questions, like you know, like, hey, so you know, when you were home, like, did you put the toilet paper facing out or under? You know what I mean? <laughs> just like the most dumb questions that well, actually I really they wonder want, about. They wanted to talk like, about I, that Like, shit. actually, now that I'm here, ciao. Under or over? Toilet paper. Uh, under, I think. I can't remember. It, it, Kung fu? Honestly, over. sometimes it might change. Yeah. <laughs> you, sometimes is you're it in everything, a pinch. Is, is, is there but a it's not way? something that you ever like. be like, no, this is the way it I've has ever, to be. I, I don't think I've ever processed it like that as long as the role will actually work and when you need to do it. Yeah, thing. as long as the role <laughs> was there, you, you know? know I mean? No, nah, but for some people, I think there's a correct way and an incorrect oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, some people have their things for almost anything, but that's a funny-ass question. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, for me, like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm an under guy, but... I understand why some people like the, uh, why the you other would way. You think over was right. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I get it. It I seems get like it. the obvious answer. Yeah. 
Because you can get a nice pull, right, from the under, like. But <laughs> but for me, if you if you pull it under and you don't like cut it off, it can just keep rolling down. Yeah, and you then you're in big I mean? trouble. You got piles. It's just of mad, paper. like toilet people like falling down on the ground, and then it, it feels dirty before <laughs> you, you hit your booty. Yeah, 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 you know, exactly. Just like, oh, okay, man, I can't I, touch my ass. I with gotta this. wipe my ass with the dirty toilet paper. It's already <laughs> dirty. It's like, oh dang, you know. But that's, that's just me. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, there we go with that. <laughs> Amazing. Now, now we, I'm going to be peeping. Now um, you got your interview style from Hearts to yeah. Return. Um, I, ju- I just want to ask people like real questions. Yeah. And that's why I like to ask, because you're a good interviewer. Um, So I just like to ask people their strategies. You know what I mean? I like, like I always you, like to ask people something weird. Um, you know, that, To be not so weird, do you ever miss interviewing people? Oh, I do. Yeah, I, I do. And also uh, people bring it up a lot and they tell me to do a podcast. And uh, for those who don't know and, you know, especially if you are a fan of Overdog um, and you are the type to ask and maybe not know or whatever. Um, yeah, man, it's just the podcasting thing. Like there's a lot of people who do it. It's 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 a, it's a heavily saturated market and I respect people who stick to it and provide a quality show. You know what I mean? That yeah. that, that is tough to do in this age because it's a big commitment. It, like it's something where like I can't give two hours a week or even like two hours a month to do it that as much as I want to. Like I need to have the headspace to do something else. Like I need I'm I'm working on something big. You know what yeah, I mean? bandwidth, I'm, back to the bandwidth. Exactly. You know, I'm at capacity. So I wish that I could do that. Like yeah like even if you know how we're just kicking it now like I, this mm-hmm. is how overdog was like we would just kick it and like ask questions and like uh especially if i was a, like a bigger like you know fan of the artist or whatever it may be i would have crazy questions cause yeah, I'd yeah, be yeah like yo like i know kind of like insider stuff anyways but like i would have never never ask any weasel shit or nothing like that i took pride in that people That's would always good. say yeah. you know n- absolutely never even if it was like on some, this can be like, you know, going viral if I ask this. No, no, no. Like, fuck that shit, bro. This guy asked about the shit you're curious yeah, about. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're a solid dude, then you're not curious keep it about as no fuck shit. as possible. Yeah, yeah but, I mean? I, but, but what he's saying here is like, I could ask you something that would just get all kinds of alerts. Yeah, no, like, could be provocative you know, but, or whatever. Yeah, but that's not what we're here for. That's not, that's not what I was there for. That's not the, the reason why we had the show. Or whatever. It was about the music, man. It was always yeah, about the music. You got, got those good guests, you know what I mean? Exactly. You weren't here for the play play. Yeah, definitely. I like that. I, I do miss. I like I, that. I miss interviewing people, um, but I don't listen to music or process it the same way I used to. So oh, no. It, it's just not like me being able to do that. It's, part of it's, you know, I don't want to listen to too much music to like hurt my ears because when I say hurt my ears, I bump a lot of fucking music and I need to give my ears a break. Mm-hmm. Like, I just never respected that as much as I do now because it's, I sometimes wonder, like, I got to go get my ass checked out. Like, I don't know if I'm, like, I thought about it the other what day. What is your Am wife I like? losing a little um, hearing him in my left ear? You know what I mean? What does your yeah. wife like to like to listen to? Uh, she's got her own shit like that, but she li- she loves what I listen to. Like, oh okay, she will. She's like, on that same hip hop tip. That also like. I, I listen to you know by des- partly by design, probably not a lot of my own shit because I'll either be mixing of course. and mastering yeah, yeah, it or of course. like yeah, I love my shit. You know, what I mean? mm-hmm. if you don't love your shit, you're doing it wrong. Um, but no, nah, I, I love my shit and I listen to it a lot, and the homies listen to it or whatever it may be, and she fucks with it like she loves that shit, but also she is interested. In, you know, when I do client work, mixing and mastering, or mm-hmm. like doing videos or whatever it may be. She likes Sometimes to hear she'll like that all shit. That. She'll pick that up and listen to it. But she's got her shit. She's I don't know. I can't even tell you. Like she doesn't put on music often. She's because I have music on all the time. All right, right, the time. right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and when I when I don't have music on, she knows I'm not trying to listen to it. So she might put her headphones on or whatever, maybe. Uh Jelani, you live with a, your significant other. Mm-hmm. Who's in control of the radio at your house? It depends on the time of day. You know mm. what I mean? No matter what we're doing, you know, but we, we have music on all the time. Right. Like we were in the car earlier and I was like, who is this? And she was like, oh, I was like, I, I you know, I recognize stuff because she's big into music herself. Yep. Uh, she's big into like Hiatus Coyote and 
her and uh um just like soul you know does she uh does she does she get records the same way you do because the vinyl collection here is growing i'm wondering are, are any of these her Yo, records half of them are her records uh, okay you know what, what i mean that's like right. you know she, y'all go digging together um not yes we have that's what's a up. couple times but now that we got this other spot I'm gonna have to bring her up there. It's yeah, gonna yeah. Be, it's gonna Yo, be on like shout Donkey Kong. Soundtracks. You know what I mean? It's cool sharing record stores with people, man. I'm so glad that you're up on Village Vinyl, man. That's my place. Shout out Gage, man. He hooked also, me up with some sick y- tapes today. Yeah, y- Vin- Village Vinyl was dope as fuck, and and also um, <clears throat> it's just dope, like going to different places. And I'm sorry to talk shit about some of the places around here, but like when the records are actually clean, you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, like, no doubt. everything is good when you bring them home and everything is uh-huh. like, Oh, I don't know. Sometimes you got to check, man. Rubbish. You be selling some moldy shit. Mm-mm-mm. They do <clears throat> you dirty, but, uh, no, I love it. I love it. I like to, uh, I like to hear what other people are listening to because I, I kind of get kind of, um, just stuck in one zone like tunnel vision Word. you know what i mean yeah. in, in one thing that i'm listening to so i like to hear what other people are doing and that's what my lady is good for too she's like oh you don't know this you that's know? what's so, up you, you need know, to get put on a new shit sometimes just like oh this is actually kind of dope right there yeah no i feel that my wife's like always it. been like a fan of me as like the dj as well because i can introduce yeah. her to well, so many different things yeah like, from the, like the tip of my you know fucking you're the source, kind of like my to her. hands you know could like mean? put on the craziest music for her, or whatever it may be, and she'd be like, "What the fuck is?" It? And, then I, and then I could talk about it for hours. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I used to be like, uh, you know, I used to be like that, but now ever since I started getting back to the creator side of things, when I was a rapper, I was like that still. And then when I was doing the radio, obviously I was like that. And then once I started making beats and stuff like that, I just. I learned about capacity, man, and, like, I just don't have it as much, like, don't get me wrong, I bump some shit. Yeah. Like, I bump some shit like crazy. Like, you know, I'm a big Mock fan. Yeah, I mean, you're wearing a Griselda shirt right now, right? Oh, yeah, yeah this is, yeah. I think, I think this is actually a good question, man. What's the most recent record that was made by someone who's not you or inside of your camp that you were like, oh, yeah, this is sick, and I got to listen to this a whole bunch? Uh, damn, you're going to have to give me a second, because. Kind of buzz right now. Just off the top of your head, what's a recent one that just pops into your head? That's the thing. I'm about to pull up my um my shit right now. Can I give you a second to think about it? Yeah. While I ask my friend over here a question. Yeah, yeah. Go for it, William. Yes. You just watched uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. How how did you like the movie? I loved it. Okay. Absolutely loved it. I got to see this. This is right up your alley. Yeah. It this looks, is um, maybe the best movie I've seen in the past 375 days. Wow. Are <laughs> we talking maybe, this, this is movie of the year right now? If we, if this if this were to be eligible for anything coming yeah. up in the future, this movie is it. Yeah. This movie is unquestionably out of this world. Can I catch this in the theaters? Because I know you did, Vega. Yes, you can catch it in the theaters, and it's on on demand uh, for like 20 bucks. Is it? Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally worth the 20 bucks. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, now you tell me. I just watched it again in the theater. I would have much <laughs> rather been home. Really? I, that's a perfect movie for the theater. But no, in the theater, it is loud, and it is amazing. Bonafide. Where do you see it? I saw it the first time in Kendall. Okay. And the second time I went to assembly for it. Okay. That's what's up. Well, I'm glad it's a Kendall, man. Maybe the, Kendall, check that out. the Kendall crowd was much better. Yeah, they're quiet. They know how to shut the fuck up Those and watch people, a movie. They do, but also they appreciate the good shit. Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, one of the trailers for it was this movie called Men. Uh huh. And I'm not going to. That's gonna, bizarre. Yeah, it was wacky, but like, one. The dual, dual one, too. <laughs> once, like, the name of the movie came across as men, like, most of the people in the crowd just laughed. So, like, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course, men of course, are responsible Kendall. for this, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, but the movie itself is so bizarre and it's so out of this world. Like, I can't even spoil it if I tried. All right, I it is it. so good, and my girl Michelle Yeoh mm-hmm. is so phenomenal. 
And you have two people that I'm not going to ru- ruin for people that are in this movie that if you're like a Kung Fu fan or just like an 80s like movie fan, yeah. you're going to be it's like, gonna oh, shit. It's going to set you off. You're going to be like, oh, oh that's my That's, that's my, my boy right, right there. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't want to say anything before you saw it, Vega, but <laughs> I was like, oh, he'll definitely see it as soon as the movie starts. That's so good. That, that, that's him. But uh, I recommend it to everybody. Movie of the year. All right. I'm checking it out. Everything, everywhere. All, All at, at once. once. All at once. All right. Sick. So what What did you come up with, Chow? Uh, I'll be real with you. I don't even really... I don't really have anything to say. Like, what was the question again? And was, like, <laughs> the question was, asked about an album, but like, is I, it something was, like wowed me, or is no? It something? Yeah, just just something that caught your ear, and you were like, I, you know what? I actually do have the bandwidth. I am gonna listen to this album a oh, bunch. Oh, I mean, uh, honestly, I, I it, it's it's like I I process music in such a weird way. Like, uh, I don't listen to like whatever just dropped. I might listen to your old shit. Like, if you just drop some shit, I might yeah. listen to your older shit. Mm-hmm. Just to be like, oh, I, I missed out on that. Let me catch up on that. Your shit's gonna be around if it's gonna make enough noise. I'm gonna have to already hear it anyways, so I'm not gonna be able to avoid that. Let me give back the shit that I wanted to give a try to. Anyways. Yeah. So like, I'll do weird shit like that, just because that's how I process shit. Like, I'm like, damn, like I was at capacity, but I did want to check this out. Now, if yeah, it's yeah. something new or whatever, I will check it out if if it just happens across my path. But uh, um. And do really, you think that you don't listen to it because you don't want it to influence the way you make new music? Oh, partly that, and also like I'm just tired of like listening to shit after a certain point. Like I hit a capacity with, um, you know, ear, whatever it may be. Like after, yeah, it's not pleasing to the ear anymore. Yeah, You've been listening to music all damn week. You, you get mm-hmm. ear fatigue, you know what I mean, or whatever it may be. And ear fatigue, I never really got that until I started listening to music for samples. Oh, that like, should make you tired for real. You'd be exhausted. Yeah, because I was yeah, actually, for real. I'm like extensively listening to the music and not just doing it like with the rest of my day. Um, but, you know, I do dig sometimes just walking around. I might have fucking music playing or whatever, and I'll sample the joint if I like it. Or yeah. I got technology, you know, with tech, you can do anything now. But, um, I don't really do that as much. I listen to the music that, like, I might listen to some Doom or whatever it may be. Uh, I'm a big Bronson fan, uh, Rock Marciano. Like, and I, I hate to say, like, the, the names that everybody else says. Yeah, yeah. But these are very influential people. Right, and yeah, they're very good, you, too. You know what well, I mean? That's the thing. But you know for what I mean? a good reason. And though. those are the people that, like, I tend to go back to their albums a lot more than um, things because they have, a, a like, a healthy catalog. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's a lot for me to like go back and listen to everybody's shit. So I haven't even heard all of Bronson's catalog and mm-hmm. I've, I've heard like 80% of it. You can't like, even get I, a lot of it either. It's yeah, a, a lot of it's not streaming either. Exactly. Like I, you know, I was introduced to him with like the program and stuff like that. And like all yeah. of that, that early shit that's not on streaming. And I know all that shit, but I haven't even heard like the newer shit. I haven't even heard like only for dolphins all the way through. And I love some of those songs on there. I just, I also have a bit of ADHD, uh, not a bit. I have whatever they can say <laughs> back in high school. I'm going to raise my hand and say I have not heard the whole thing also. You know what I mean? I, I'm I honestly, sorry. I used to get halfway through albums. And, and, and it's like not malicious because I love action. Yeah. It, oh, I it, love it's the not, shit, it's not, it's not malicious. It's just that not there's, every so song. Much, there's so much that is happening. No, that's right. And I just oh, yeah, haven't had the, no, a just, chance to listen to it all the way through. Yo, listen. This album we just put out, this mm-hmm. shit is 20 minutes long. So short, so sweet. For too. a reason. Wait a because minute. Because dudes don't have the capacity. I want Wait everyone to hear this whole album. Yeah. 20 minutes? 20 minutes. Nine songs, 20 minutes. Dude, I was done with it before I got to the second toll in New Hampshire. And yeah. I, I played it again. And then I, you know, I told you I played the Elegant Elliot Offen song five times. Yeah. yeah. I That's fucking loved it. Because it goes. But we yeah. want Actually, I, there was more than there was quite a few songs that I played. I, I played it through twice, but yeah. then I there, there were songs that I went back to multiple times. That's what's well, up. good, man. It's That's a, a great sign. Time. That's a good sign. You, you sound, like I said, you sounded great on it. Like Thanks, I think brother. this is, might be your, your magnum opus so far. This might be oh, your number really? one album hey, of uh, man. 2022. Uh, it might be. This might be it your might number be. one album. Might be, <laughs> might be my favorite album of 2022. Shit. Yeah, hey, shout but, uh, out to uh, D-Phrase for mixing this. Yeah, he did a great job on that, man. Shout out D-Phrase. That's my guy. I'm doing an album with him too, man. I'm doing an EP with him. So get ready, people. Hell yeah. Um, I can't what else wait. Do you got going on? Oh, yeah. I, got, I got like. What's going on in the future? I got a lot going on right now. Who Done It is with 
uh, the Dunners the full and, length and, album, right? And Loman, and that's the first time I have an album. That Oak and Dees, like Oak and Dees, Oak and Dees. It's co-produced, co-produced. co-produced with our guy Loman. So it's one third Dunners, uh, it's one third Loman produced, one third Chow produced, one third co-produced me and Loman. So we kind of like wanted to mix it up and do some other shit. Um, uh, I kind of came to Loman and was like, "Yo, we should do this project." And he was like, "All right." I kind of got like a lot of other things going on, and I was like, "You at capacity?" And he he already knows. Like I used to talk like that, and he'd be like, "Yeah, I'm kind of at capacity, bro." But I I got some beats off him. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And he ended up being able to come around to some of the sessions, but it wasn't as much as like me, you know, kind of piloting the ship and being like, "Yo, this is what we're gonna do." Or not the ship, the fucking the plane or whatever, or captain in the ship, whatever. Kind of drunk. We right got now. you. Um, hey, but you know, uh, <laughs> w- with Who Done It, like that's the lane we're in. Nah, Who Done It's a very special project for me because I'm glad to. I'm gonna hear about it with, with my um, all my projects special to me, but like I'm glad to have made this album with Loman because he's one of the dudes who was very influential in me being able to get into beats because not because I. Just, you know, like, even with the shit, like, he didn't even show me that much shit, but, like, me being around people who were, like, crazy good with it, and they were like, yo, I like the early shit, and I'm like, oh, word? Like, that gave me crazy mm-hmm. confidence, you know what I mean? I was like, all right, word, if you fuck with it, then... It's the little things like that like, that and, mean a whole lot. You know what I mean? This is an ill combo, man. I'm hyped. Mm-hmm. Oak and Dees, been, their output has been crazy recently. Yeah. Big fans of their recent work, and then you and Loman, like my two favorite producers right now. So, Word. and I know there's some ill. F- I've already got a little sneak peek of some of the joints, just a little premix shit, and uh, there's some ill features on this record. Yeah, we got Who Done It. Um, we got more Feta coming with me and Oak, part of the Feta series. Um, we got then the Magno Part Two coming soon. Uh, I got a lot of projects in the works, probably like ten joints total but like five yeah, of them are but it feels already like recorded five it feels like you have on. music on deck on deck on deck yeah oh actually no i got more i got like eight <laughs> recorded and then i got like five in the works yeah as uh, I, I just said you have music on deck yeah, on deck and i hate to say it like that i'm not trying to brag or nothing either. no like, but sometimes that's you're shit working gets, you're working with a lot of different people off. doing a different a lot of different things. Well, I think, too, a lot oh, of the people... Because I don't have enough time to drop it all. You know what I mean? Like, that I, too. I try not to overwhelm But people. I think, too, it's like like you said, like you you did an album with Oak in a couple days. You're working with guys all the time. You get to know them. You get to know how they record. You get to know the ins and outs of each other. You guys are friends as well. So the music output kind of just kind of maybe just rolls. You know yeah. what I mean? So it it's a, a good working environment versus, like, once again, like you could be working with randos or just throwing beats out there and then you're not like in the the end results and all this stuff this is like more i don't know it, it's not like a factory you know yeah, what i mean no, it's it, mad it, collaborative man yeah. all our work as you all know is all, mad collaborative and i know you have that that close relationship with a lot of the rappers you work with yeah like um, i've sold a lot of beats and shit like that in the sense of like not like crazy crazy amounts but some yeah. of the beats i i don't know these people like right I, you know what i mean whatever it may be but is that weird? Like, would you rather like build a relationship with the people? Oh yeah, I'm trying to. You, like, like I said earlier, I'm trying to stop selling the beats. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm yeah, trying but you to can't turn down that bread neither, man. No, but eh. like maybe you want to. You're not going to sell the not beats to people who you actually like and yeah. like what they're doing. You know, like, for sure. Well, I mean, to be selective with who you sell them to, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, like you can't buy. Like, not trying to be like this dude, but this is something that was, you know, like, oh, all right, that opened up some, you know. A new thought process for me um, and other talk about it. Come on, is uh, Ka? You know, yeah, yeah. He's oh, a, yeah. He we, won't sell you a him. beat, huh? You can't buy a Ka verse. Oh, you can't buy a verse from the you man. You can't buy a Ka verse. That's what's up. He doesn't. I mean, that's interesting because I only I only know he doesn't operate like that. him from collaborating with Rock Marshall. I only know him from Vega. There you know, he's Vega's the man. been Ka's talking about Ka for time. 20 Ka's, years. Ka's the man. Yeah, Vega put me on too, Vega man. has been talking about Ka since I've known Vega to be wanted to do a podcast. Days with Yen Lo? Yeah. Come on, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a good Vega's one too. been talking about Ka for uh, as long as days have been cold. <laughs> you can't buy a Ka verse. And that spoke to me because it, you know. Like I said, sometimes I've sold beats and I might not necessarily like the record when it's done or mm-hmm. like whatever it may be. or And it's kind of not up to me at that point anymore. And I could, 
you know, yeah. not give clearance, but I'm not going to do that. This person put their money down and or whatever it may be. I got to stop being so like, uh, like that. You know what I mean? I just got to be like, yo, this is the music I want to make. Cause definitely most of the music I've, I've put out is the music I want to make. But some of the shit is just like, just how it happens naturally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I have so many things going on. Some what? things kind of slip through or I've made some music with people. I don't necessarily know. Uh, I don't regret anything. Yeah. Nothing like that. But it's not necessarily how I would have lined everything up. It's just how it happened to drop. And that's a lot of music. Not not saying all of my music is like that. A lot of music I made has been like how you're saying. And like 90% of the music I make is in person. Yeah. 95 even. Maybe even like 96% of the music I make is in person with that. Um, w- with the artist. and But, you know, some of the shit... Might be sold beats or whatever, or I might have sent some stuff out. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe not very many at art, uh, very many artists at all have I sent beats out to. That's one thing for sure. It, it, it's tough for that to to happen because I I don't want somebody to take a beat and, and sit on it for fucking like ten years. Yeah, and then like somebody else gets the beat and then they get mad at that shit. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Um, I I don't want that to happen. Uh, I like to work, and I, I don't want to force nothing, though. So, like, let's say, you know, for instance, you know, one of everybody's favorite fucking producers, this has happened to Alchemist, he yeah. trusted Jay Electronica with the shit, and it went to Jay-Z and Jay Electronica. Yeah. You know, who, who's to say that won't happen if I give, you know, super a beat for fucking three years, and that happens. Yeah. But I'll be real with you, if I feel like I'm working with somebody and that beat works for them, Bro, I'm trying to make some music now before right, I die. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm, tra- I'm trying to get this done. Like, I might tell him, yo, I, I got to take this beat back and give you, like, two beats then. Fuck yeah. I can't be mad at that. You know what no. I mean? No. That's just how it happens. Mm. Well, goddamn, man. Oh, yeah. The Dunners have a show this coming up soon, This fucking music too. industry oh, is, a, is a really fickle industry, isn't it? It can be. Yeah, it is yeah. as a whole, but uh, I don't know, man. I'm doing all right. Um, that's what matters. Like I said, I I wouldn't want to do anything else besides what I'm doing right now. But in the future, I'll definitely be taking different roles. I'm trying to be creative director, man. I won't. I probably won't be shooting music videos oh. too, too, too too much longer. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to do a be. Your videos are actually fucking three on, to five years. on I, point like a needle. Appreciate that, but I want to be able to step in the position to be the creative director of it. I might be booking the videos give the overall vision of it and tell this dude, this is how you're going to shoot that. Yeah, I'm going to tell the editor, this, way, yeah, this yeah. is how it's going to be edited. I'm going to tell the color grader, this is how it's going to be color graded. I'm a one man army right now. And I, I lie about that because my wife holds me down so fucking much. She doesn't do any of the, you know, the shooting or the editing or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But she charges the batteries. Literally. There's been times where I would have forgot to charge the battery, and that this isn't often, but like some very clutch times. And ask any of my clients, I've never showed up without the battery or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like they know me. Hey, uh, that's, I hold it that's down. good on you to Absol- realize that you're not the only one oh, in nah, this I, battle. You know, yo, without her, I don't know if I could do any of this shit. But yeah, shout out to Sarah one more time. I love you, baby. <laughs> no, that's that's what's up, man. Hell yeah, man. Anything- it's hard. I said the supervisor no. hates women, so that's not true. That's not true. It's it's hard to talk nah, to my him man, about this. My man, super big fan of women. I say my man, super is, big fan. Of women. <laughs> he's definitely like he, if man. If I was single back in the day, he would have been my wingman. Yeah. This dude is 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 a very. He's not afraid big to talk to the ladies. Big player supervision. You know what I mean? Like Watch my, You kidding me? Um, the Dunners have a show coming up too next month. Okay. Right, oh, will you yeah, be there do. for that? Yeah, we yeah. We're trying to get yeah. Oak up here, man. He already knows. So we're going to get Oak up here soon. We'll be at the Freestyle and, Clinic. And, and, and these too. Oh, oh that's what's finally. Up. At the yeah. Blue Room? The Blue Room. Yep. Sick. Shout out, Seti. I think well, it's May what's 21st. What's the date on that? May 21st, I believe. Saturday? May 21st. I'll be okay. uh, DJing and... Um, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I'll be DJing that. So oh, we'll definitely be When I say not the, not the entire night, I'll be... For the Dunnest music, I don't DJ with like the ones and twos yet. Yeah. I want to get into that eventually. That's Thursday night, but I, I you know, it's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. I don't. No, I think no, on no, the four hundred four. No. Thought it. it was a Saturday. Yeah, I think it's a Saturday. You said the twenty first. No, 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 he said no, no, no. the, uh, the twenty first. I think oh. it's it is the twenty first of May. Oh, twenty first of May. My fault, man. I thought yeah. it was this goddamn. I thought it was this week. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no, no. My bad. Nah, okay, so cool. That, that's May gonna be super dope. I don't know if Who Done It's gonna be out by then. But there was one and done with my, you know, that's my brother right there, Chef Bogey. Can we talk about who done it real quick, though? Who done it? Yeah, I mean, 
who done it like i said man uh it was a collaborative effort between me loman and and the dunners and this album sounds really like like a mesh up of everything that's kind of been going on like there's some loma beats on there that are like fucking 12 years old or, or something like that or wow there's um there's you know some shit that i made that i wanted to take off the album because i didn't think that it fit my sound but then because it was a joke beat yeah and they just rhymed to it and i was like eventually I got over it and i was gonna remix it and blah blah, blah. I was like, <laughs> fuck it i'll just leave that shit if anybody judges me for it fuck them you know what yeah, I, mean? exactly. I really don't give a fuck yeah but uh I, just for me personally like when i hear it halfway through it makes me want to skip it because it's like a joke song but i kind of needed that like i needed that like feeling of I don't know, but they don't. They love that shit. The, the, the <laughs> Dunners love that song. Um, but I, the beat to me is like a joke. Yeah, it, it's not a joke in the sense of like, you know, trying to um, like make you laugh. But it's like, oh shit, I really looped that shit. <laughs> like I, I looped. Some yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll, you'll hear it when you hear it. But I love that song now because of how free I feel when I put that shit out. Yeah. Without you know, because if someone's gonna um, not like it, oh well, just skip it. You right. know what I mean? But anyways, shout out to um Who Done It. Like I, I love that project, man. I really fucking I, I can't wait to put that one out, man. I'm 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 fully behind that. Me, Loman, and the Dunners love this fucking song uh this project. Uh it's got a different sound, like I said, because we're trying to uh trying to <laughs> shout out to the dog of the brother. Uh now we're trying to do something different here. We're not trying to necessarily give you like Run of the mill shit like the 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 Dunnas rhyme about some wild shit. Yeah, like, they're D, all. D's got some crazy punchlines. <laughs> Oak can rhyme about anything and make it crazy. Uh, you know what I mean? We had fun experimenting, and some of my beats on there are wild. Like I go from like crazy hard shit to like sampling some anime that necessarily you wouldn't know. Like what the fuck? Like what is this? <laughs> it almost sounds like it belongs in like Edward Scissorhands. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. That's what's up. Um, and you guys got the album coming out Tuesday. Yep. We got Cattle Guard dropping on Tuesday Cattle between Guard me and the Supervisor. Tuesday. It's so, yeah. the second time that we've Can't collabed. Wait for that one. You know, we had Methadone Miles. Um, that one right there was very special. That We could have a whole podcast about that entire fucking album. We have, I think. Yeah. We actually we have. <laughs> yeah. We talked a lot about that when it came out. Thank you, guys. But, uh, you know, just, just to recap, we yeah. raised a couple thousand dollars for some awesome charities down there. Um, on the mile that are doing work with homeless people and people with, with addictions. I mean, and and, and uh-huh. on the music side, though, that yeah. album for me was crazy. And that like, was, yeah. that was, Like, that, shout out to us for doing that nuts. and all that. But, uh, yeah. um, like, fucking, and shout out to everybody who donated. That was, like, fucking heartwarming, man. Like, yeah, that it was, was it amazing. Was cool, cool, cool thing to do, man. Super amazing. Shout out to everyone who was involved with that. Get Cattle Guard Tuesday. Yep. Chairman Chow, thank you for coming. You Appreciate you, bro. It was really awesome. Oh, really happy God. to see you here. I, I hope you will come back. Oh, yeah. Let me know. Jelani, I, I hope you come back as well. I will be here next May, Sunday. Uh, amazing to have you as well. Thank uh, you for coming through, uh, Savio. Um, I, 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 I feel like we can do this every week. Yeah. You can bring your friends. That's I'll how comfortable it feels. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Great. Um, check us out, cryptonline.com, Hip Hop Heads Podcast, hiphopheads.org. I'm Vega the Chosen everywhere. You can be bona fide. You can send them an email. The supervisor, supervisor win, supervisor unlimited, supervision unlimited on the gram, supervisor underscore HLB on the twits. Where I can mean, you get the album? You can you, get it on the cryptonline.com. We'll post that day up so you can buy it yeah. there. It's on Bandcamp. Do all your business through the cryptonline.com. Is it streaming? I know sometimes yep. you guys are kind no, it's of going to stream. It's every. It's, it's everywhere at at uh at the everywhere. At the stroke of midnight. At the stroke of midnight on the nineteenth, guys. Amazing. Jack well, it out. I can't wait to hear it again. Jack it out? I'll, I'll, Jack it out. I'll be oh, listening. Jack it out. I'll give oh. you guys your eighth of a penny um, uh, right. on Spotify. Appreciate that. I'll hook y'all up. Um, I'm going to buy it. You guys should put it on title so you can get more. No, nah, it'll be on uh, title. It'll be on that. It'll be on that. It'll be on title. But awesome. I'll pay for it. My guy. Appreciate that. Hey, yo, uh, I'll save I'd like to support my, uh, my artist. I mean, follow me at chairman underscore chow underscore. Um, on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Chairman uh, Chow, we're going to have all kinds of conversations. Oh, hell yeah. I want to pick your brain about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Chairmanchow.bandcamp.com. Go buy some music. Um, support, you know, me and the homies and all that stuff doing our thing. Uh, Chow Films at 
chow underscore chow uh, wow <laughs> at chow underscore films underscore follow that book me for whatever visual needs you need as long as you are serious and you are a professional i am with that let me know you so he'll do porn is what you're saying serious uh, inquiries yeah, only sound like it's gonna be if you met story. supervisor 10 years ago he, he would have shot a, a porn music video I wanted to, <laughs> to do porn when I was like 18. Yeah, yeah. I bought a camera for that when I was 18. And I understand. I had the chicks for it. And I Why just, are you ruining like, nah. my memoir? I, <laughs> yeah. I was just like, nah, when it came down to it, I was like, I'm not going to do it. Because I wanted to be the dude doing it. I didn't want to yeah. shoot nobody else's phone. Right, yeah, yeah, of course you know, not. Thank you, shut down. down the show. Yeah. You ruined my shit. <laughs> Ciao, thank you, thanks thank again you for, for coming being. through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a good man. All, All right, right, bro. Appreciate you. Cryptonline.com. Peace Check out. Guys. Kung Fu. Peace. Love you. Love you too, man. <laughs> Love you.